see, the thing is, I want all the smoke. I ain't gonna hold you. So real quick, (laughs) y'all. I need y'all to know what the fuck it is. (laughs) And for that, we will start the pot off the only way to. What you think it is, Bridget? I mean. We got time today. <laughs> we got motherfucking time. That's how we showed up. Yo, welcome back to another episode of See The Thing Is. Because listen, we got time today, baby. Bumping they gums and bumping my tape. I ain't the dick through her underwear. I do be doing that. All right. All right, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I always got time for that. Hey. <sighs> sorry, can I let this ride just a little bit? Y'all don't even know what type of week it's been for me, baby. Mmm. Mmm. I don't like nobody. Mmm. I ain't want to go back. Mm. I got, got time, time today. today. I'm crossing the line today. All right, y'all. We do got time today. And uh, we going to try to not choose violence. <laughs> no, we're not choosing violence. We're, we have time. We just we just got time. We just have time. But it's not choosing violence? No. No? So what it is? It's just we, just, we just got time today. Yeah. Although we do technically have time every Monday. We make time every Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, valid. We make time every Monday. Very, very fucking but valid. But time is expensive, you know? And uh, and sometimes Bitch people... Bitch, ain't it? Sometimes people spend it thinking they can get it back. And you can't. Oh, nah. So, That's why I always say... It was a lot I'm of time. Cool, I'm cool if you make me waste money. Don't make me waste my motherfucking time. That's okay? a currency that none of us can really afford. Ooh, but here we are. None of us. Here we are. And we y'all, got time today for y'all. And we, we do. don't have any Friends with Benefits joining us this episode. No. Um, but well, we have some good ones coming up. We have some repeats. I'm super excited for oh, yeah, uh, some real friends. Oh, real pulling. friends. They pulling up. They pulling up. I do love that we have our real friends on here. Me too. Me I too. I really do. I really love that. Yeah. Um I guess, yeah, y'all, welcome back. I, I'm excited and not excited all at the same time because <laughs> this is my last day and a half. Um for liquor. Bridget yeah. and I are doing Sober September. Sober September. Yeah. Um, I think I've talked to I mean I do my friends I I do it every year I didn't know you do that this is my third year in a row doing um a sober September and I I mean I think I think it's really um you know how people do January they feel like they gotta they gotta start the year off right (laughs) which you know what I mean it's like everybody goes back to the gym and everybody's eating well and nobody's drinking for the first like two weeks after the first and then everybody just falls off the wagon again I did want to ask you yeah two weeks that's accomplished too right like or you do the whole month Nah, I do the homework. How so many, how many days is in September? So I mean, I'm I'm gonna I'm cheating. Well, I'm gonna cheat a little bit this year, and I'm gonna start tomorrow. Well, start today, the thirty okay. first, um, because my my man's birthday is on the thirtieth of September. So I want to oh, be yeah, able to have a drink with drink. him. And so yeah, so so I'm gonna give myself. I'm I'm starting today. So no no. Well, tomorrow technically, I guess today we're today where where we are currently. It's Monday, so we're having wine today. Los Vascos. Wine. Los Vascos. Los is Vascos. Los Vascos. Cabernet Sauvignon. The Cabernet that we're sipping on today. We, we got the Cabernet, y'all. Oh, dear. Yeah. What? It's Cabernet. The, the, pe- the Peanut Grigio. Mm-hmm. I like that shit, too. Peanut <laughs> Grigio. That is the shit. That's the only white wine I like. Pico All that other shit. de Ghetto. <laughs> 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 yeah, but no, yeah, Sober September is a thing because every all summer long we drink every day. Legit every day. Like I didn't realize until like maybe last week when I, not even actually a couple of weeks ago when I had a, when I had that sinus infection and I was on antibiotics right. and I couldn't drink and I realized, yo, we really be drinking every day. Like Mandy and I really be with, anywhere. Like we just be at the house. We'll be sitting brainstorming, coming up with ideas, coming yep. up with show topics, like all types of stuff and be like, since you want a cocktail? And it's like, yeah, it's 11 a.m. But who cares? We worked out already. It's cool. <laughs> like we took a bar class and left the class is a bar club, like bar class, like conditioning class. We took a conditioning class and went to the bar after and yep. took pickleback we went, shots. We went from bar to bar. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I know, so sober September for me is like my January because I feel like I am, it's literally the last quarter. It's the fourth quarter. 
And that's that to me, that's game time, right? You think about it from a sports perspective. That's when you that's when you that's when you give it all you got. So to me, fourth quarter is yeah. like, OK, the last four months, the last four months of the year. Most important months for me to make sure that I accomplish and finish and, and well, complete all the stuff. Technically, technically, yeah. the quarter is starting in October. Well. Because the quarter is three months. There's four quarters. That's true. That's true. So September is, I'm trying to, I'm trying to leave myself. <laughs> okay. I was like, September, October. Mm, that's true. That's true. That's true. You feel right. me? You're right. So technically it should be October. But no, I'm but girl, do, then that's my September. birthday, bitch. You gonna drink in October. All right. Well, there we go. Shout so out. Gonna... That's a, she ain't got no motherfucking choice. <laughs> so, so like, September. I, I'm one of them friends. Like, you're not what? Well, my birthday is here, so you have to do it. So fuck your whole lifestyle change because this is what we're doing. Um, I will say, and also... Shout out to my friends. I didn't realize how many of my friends were Virgos. Mm. Wait, is that what, what it yeah. is right now? Yeah. We are, all of my friends are over 30 at this point. One just turned 30 today. And she called me and was like, I'm only not going to cuss you out because you did post me on your story. Happy birthday. But where is my call and where is my gift? And I was like, in our 30s, do we really remember actual people's birthdays still? Like, bro, I'm not on Facebook. I didn't get an alert. Sorry. Unless I see you reposting everyone else's post about it being your birthday. I don't know the date. You're 30. I literally asked her this morning, when does this stop? When do you stop caring about birthday wishes? Because I've already outgrown Merry Christmas, Texas. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy New Year. Don't blow my phone up with that shit, bruh. And so on my birthday, the whole month of October, I will accept your money. The whole month. You don't have to send it to me exactly on my birthday. And you don't have to wish me a happy birthday. Mm. Especially if you're my friend that I talk to, that I hang out, that I travel with, that I fuck with year round. Girl, mm. just look out for me in the month. Or I know when I'm with you, you'll you'll look out. That's what it is. Like, bro, we too old. Celebrate the children's birthdays. And you know, it's still fuck them kids. I don't be getting them little bastards no goddamn gifts. <laughs> but it's like, bro, I don't care about adults' birthdays like that anymore. I mean, I care about the acknowledgement. I don't need a gift though. Like, I don't need gifts. I don't need like if in, in my in my in my opinion, that's how okay. I like. I don't need you. Don't need to buy me a buy me a bottle of something or a gift or. To me, I feel like if I want to celebrate something, I want to put it together and I want to host it. If I'm doing, I feel like we're at that age now. You know what I'm saying? Like if I invite people out to dinner. I'm for my birthday. Like I, I, I'm not expecting everybody else to put. Like I'm not going to invite everybody to to a really expensive place and expect everybody to pull up and turn up and do. Because like you wait, said, we wait. in our thirties now. You're inviting everyone to a birthday dinner. Yeah. And are you paying for it? See, but that's what I'm saying. I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. If I'm inviting everybody, it's it's with. I'm gonna. It's gonna be a plan. It's gonna be like, hey, I'm. I want to do dinner at this place. Does this work for y'all? It's not like, hey, this is where my birthday dinner is. Pull up and pay. No, no. It's going to be a conversation. Like, is this something we can we can all do together? It's a group effort. It's not... If I'm hosting a party, I think, I think I'm think i paying for it. If going I'm hosting a party. Going out to dinner is, is already just anxiety. It's giving stress. It's giving bitches don't know how to include tax and tip. It's giving... I don't, my friend, the, I don't have friends that do that shit. It's giving at the end of the night. Somehow we're $123 short. Who didn't put in enough? We need you and need new friends because no, I don't be having those problems. I haven't had those problems lot, in years. This is a lot of the times. If you go out with like a group of girls, and that's the thing, especially right now, you have to acknowledge too. Yeah. Everyone had a different past and year and a half with and the that's pandemic. What, and that's why I say it's a conversation around what can we do collectively as mm. a group. You know what I'm saying? Like if I it's my birthday and I want I want to celebrate with y'all. Bitch, you know I'm. I mean, I love I love Philippe, but I also I love the dollar margaritas at Applebee's. A bitch is not picky. I just want to be with my friends. Okay. So it's not to me. It's about. It's really about establishing what a celebration looks like with your closest people. It's just hard now too, because I know again my homegirl turning thirty. She's like, I completely canceled my whole party because you have now the conversation. Well, are you vaccinated? My, uh, my can friend you go did get that. tested? Can like my and, and my she's best nurse, friend did so that. She was administering. Yep. Rapid test at the door. <laughs> mm. Got that going. But also, like, also, if you're not vaccinated, you must wear your mask the entire time you're here. Like, it was giving. And then, you know, yeah. of course, that's just also one of those conversations that becomes a little tricky to have. That was, people. yeah, that was what happened with with um with my friend. She wanted to have a big birthday dinner. And it's like, well, half the people are vaccinated, half the people are not. Which, of course, I'm rolling my eyes. Like, how, how are we even, how are we here? Like, it's... It's crazy. We didn't even have to think about that a year ago. It was like, 
Oh, yes, we did. Up. We keeping it small. Nah, we was keeping it small. We was keeping it concise. You're not having a dinner and a party with 30 people well, a year ago. I traveled to Mexico with not- seven of my friends and came back with COVID. So <laughs> I thought you didn't. I thought you got it in the Bronx, not because nobody else I had it. No one else had it that I was with. So but, I don't think you got it in Mexico, well, sis. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Maybe not. Because none of your friends, nobody else n- had no it. No one tested. And you, y'all was outside in Mexico. So mm-mm. I don't think it was in Mexico, sis. Well, wherever it was, <laughs> by the time I got back that that next week of yeah. my birthday, yep. I was, I, you know, positive. so like mm-hmm. it's weird because now this this year I have zero plans. All my friends keep asking me, what are you wow. doing? What do you want to do? I have zero plans for my birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, my boyfriend asked me what I want and I was like, I don't even know. I mean, we went to I Miami. I went to, me and me and Bay took a little vacation to Miami for my birthday, which we got there. We were like... <gasps> COVID isn't real to these people. No, it's not. I was terrified. No. We didn't leave the hotel. We literally did not. We was on the beach at the hotel and I was like, we can go to dinner and come back. We going to dinner and we coming back and we washing our hands. We getting in the shower. We washing our clothes. We did. That was the, that yeah, was the see, trip. So that really, don't sound like fun to me. I mean, it, and it was, it was more stressful. Like you said, yeah. it was more stressful than it was fun. More so around the COVID situation because I, I couldn't believe how many people did not, were still not really registering what was going on. But also... I got vaccinated in April, so I didn't feel I, mm. I felt I still felt like all right. I'm a, I'm I'm okay to kind of like move around. Either way, either way, I think I think you know birthdays birthdays this year for everybody. This year in general, the summer is coming to a close. It's the end of it's the last day of August. Like it's just it's crazy to me that that the summer is over. This summer did not give what it was supposed to give. Last summer was no. last summer felt more lit to me, and we were locked down last summer. This summer was was pathetic in my mind. Last summer was lit. This summer just felt like it was forced. It was dragged out. But also, like I said, and you know, I like I I think I talked about this um, not only on my other podcast but on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Like the weather. Yeah, they've been keeping us inside with yeah. this weather. It's like, been a lot of rain. It's been a lot of like it's been like April showers all summer. But also, the heat wave wasn't even like we didn't even have like a mild. There was no like week of like mild mid eighties. You know what I'm saying? Everything, oh no, we went from the seventies to ninety seven, and the <laughs> summer <was> started. <laughs> <laughs> Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day was forty eight degrees. Yeah, I had a coat on on Memorial Day. You were so miserable. I was furious. I was like, I did not leave <laughs> the land of sun and sand for this shit. This is not what I came here for. This is not. This is not a memorable Memorial Day. Yeah, no. Um, so we coming up on Labor Day weekend, and do you have you plans know, for Labor Day weekend? Yeah, we trying to hold something at, uh, on the rooftop. We trying to do something. On Saturday. Oh, are you? Yeah. We, trying to, my invite, we haven't sent invites out yet. Sis. Oh, okay. We trying to map it out. You know, we got to be like, careful. I won't come over that motherfucker and crash that motherfucker <sighs> shit. Talking Maybe. about where the fuck is my motherfucking Maybe. invite? <laughs> Mandy is my neighbor. Mandy can never <laughs> not be included or invited. Like, it's to the point now where Mandy, my doorman and Mandy's doorman don't even ask. No. Like, I, they don't call up nothing. Mandy just comes straight to my door. They already know what time it is. Oh, good morning. Mandy's well, actually, like, good morning. Well, actually, the one this morning was like, Bridget told me to stop calling her ass when I see you. <laughs> I did. Because he would call me, good morning, Bridget. I have your friend here in the lobby. And I'm like, I know who it is already. You could just send her up. You could just send her Because who else shows up to your house? Nobody else has shown up to my house in the morning. Nobody. So it's like at this point, there's never anything on my host, man. He's not included. But we have to we have to be specific too because of the the vaccination situation. Because yeah. some people are vaccinated, some people aren't. Like it's a weird. We gotta we gotta divvy it up. It's crazy how divisive that it's been. The vaccine conversation has been so divisive, and it's really been upsetting. It it, it really has. I get my second shot uh, tomorrow. Okay. So I'm um, you know. Hoping my arm can lift. I'm hoping I don't get symptoms, especially considering when I when I did have COVID, I had no symptoms. Um, so I'm hoping I'm not out, but I am fully prepared to just kind of be out for at least two days. I mean, you'll probably you got Moderna, yeah, or Pfizer, Moderna. So you might be out for like 24. I was, I I am a drama queen. I will I will say that openly. I know that my man is probably listening to this, clapping, giving it, giving me an applause because he knows. <laughs> Hold on, he knows the level of drama and theatrics <laughs> <laughs> that comes with me. Right, like whenever anybody, whenever we talk about like like tattoos or like, and it's weird because I love I love fitness. I love to work out. I like that kind of pain. But when it comes to like physical pain, like if I get sick, I'm sick. I'm dying. Like there's no. When I'm sick, I'm out. I'm out for the count. Like, oh, really you one sick. of them? My immune system is just not, it's not up to par. No matter how much echinacea, vitamin C, zinc, B6, B12, it doesn't matter what I take. My immune system, when it's down, it's down. And so okay. I had the, the second vaccine shot and I was knocked. I was out of commission for three days. 
And oh, I was like laid up. I got up, too much work to do. I and it was just not, me. I had a, you know, it was fevers, it's chills, it's body aches, it's, you know, blurred vision. Like it's the whole nine, you know what I'm saying? For three days. So for me, it's like, I know, I know myself. I can't, I can't put myself at risk in that, in that capacity. Yeah, it's, it's one of those conversations where now that I'm out, I just don't try to have it. Yeah. And y'all don't understand, especially like being in New York. Yeah. Like it literally, as soon as you walk in, you don't even get a hello. Can we see your Vax card, please? Right. Like it's no welcome to this establishment. Like, and if you don't have your Vax card, turn your ass right the fuck back around because you're not allowed to yeah. be inside. So um, New York is going to be very interesting because when it's cold, don't nobody want to sit the fuck outside. You want to sit inside. So um, it's interesting, but... We do got a lot to get to this week, baby girl. We do. We do. Baby girl, where you want to start? I can we start with the dump with the dummies first? With the dummies? With the dummies. Shout out to TikTok. Hold on, let me give them a round of applause. Shout out to TikTok for banning this dumbass motherfucking ain't none of y'all delivering milk. Why are y'all out here climbing these goddamn milk crates looking like like Boo-boo the motherfucking fool. Also, I hope every single one of you motherfucking policemen that are in the hoods doing this shit with all of your weapons on, they are falling with guns, pepper spray, tasers. They not even removing their weapons. Probably can't because where they at. And they are <sighs> falling in front of crowds of people with fucking... I, I just can't. But the, also... It's it's really, really, really just like, y'all dumb. But also... Just dumb. Jeff, Jeff Bezos. Come here. Come here, Jeff Bezos. Get real Jeff. Jeff... <laughs> Jeff Bezos is now Jeff Bezos is now allowing Amazon to sell these milk crates for no. nine hundred dollars. No, you no, you're lying. I'm gonna bring it up. You're lying. We don't have a screen. We ain't man got today. three man Alex, today. Alex, we miss Damn, you. Damn, I wish you was here. We miss you're you, Alex. Nine hundred dollars for I how saw, many milk crates? Nine hundred. Saw... What? <laughs> you're lying. You're I'm gonna pull lying. it up. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it up. Nine hundred dollar milk crates, bruh. It used. It, I I saw a sign that said it was a crate. It was a stack of crates for nine hundred dollars. Okay, they're back to normal now. <laughs> uh, what now is, they're what, back to normal. What is the I, normal cost of them? I don't know, but this storage kit for four for four of these is seventy five dollars for four on Amazon. Oh wait, and I know the middle one has to be seven. So, number you spending at least twenty two dollars. Yeah, twenty two dollars for two. Uh huh. Oh, hell no. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. Juggernaut storage. Yeah, here we go. Okay. <laughs> $42.80 $42 for one crate. Get the fuck out of here. One crate. And that's the rectangle one. That's the one they've been cheating with. That 40, don't look like a square one. $42. All I know is... For one crate. All I know is, uh, for those of you who have not been put on uh, by this uh, TikTok craze... Uh, TikTok uh, released a statement and they said that, uh, oh, basically, if you tried to search the, the, the crate challenge on TikTok, then you would probably receive the message that no results were found. <laughs> or this phrase may be associated with behavior or content that violates our guidelines. That's because all videos have been wiped from the platform. According to CNN, the Chinese based app has banned all challenge videos mm. from their platform due to the dangerous activity. An official TikTok spokesperson said TikTok prohibits content that promotes or glorifies dangerous acts, and we remove videos and redirect uh, searches to our community guidelines to discourage people from doing this thing. Um, I agree. This wasn't something you would try, right? Have you tried no. any of the challenges? No. Like not even the cinnamon one? No. <laughs> Life is challenging enough. Why are we creating challenges? Bro, that was such an auntie thing to say, bitch. <laughs> Life is hard. Sis, Why make it harder? Life is hard enough. I be trying to walk out the house and the doorknob grabs my pocket and snatches my body back. That is a challenge enough. I want to, I'm 5'8". I want to be able to walk through my house, walk through a door and not have my hip bone hit the doorknob on the way out. Damn. I want that to be a thing. Come up with it. Let the challenge be a solution for that. <laughs> okay? I don't need to create challenges. Life is hard enough as is. Thank you though. Yeah, but then when motherfucking Tesla out here wanted to make your life easier with robots, you ain't trying to hear it. Which one is it? They're trying to make your life easier with the robots, sis. No. I don't, that, that's not going to make my life easier. <laughs> no. I would rather pay a lady that I know who can look me in my face and say, sis, the dust is real. I'm not trying to have that conversation with no robot. 
Well, shout out to the robots, y'all. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I thought we would at least start off start off there because I was just I'm like... I'm sick of the challenge. But I'm I also sick of know, it. like, we have yet to even create t- tiki takis And <sighs> I keep trying to tell Bridget, y'all, we going to do this little dance where it goes... That's all I know. And they just go like this. <laughs> Bro, we can't be coming out here sounding like we voted five. <laughs> It just watching that looks like it looks like it's giving Sesame Street. <laughs> like why? Why are we doing this? Why? Y'all look dumb. And it be grown ass people. Wait, they look dumb. so what if I do it? Am I gonna look dumb? dumb. <laughs> You're not gonna dumb. Shit. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you you look dumb. Damn. The only people I give it a, I give a pass to are are parents who do it with their kids. If you're doing something like that with your kid, cool. Cause it's something that the kids find entertaining and it's fun for them, great. Outside of that, grown ass people doing <laughs> 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 what the fuck? No, no, y'all look dumb. Well, that's fine. I'm childish as fuck. Thank you. Mm. Give me my little childish ways. I mean, childish is cool sometimes, but that shit, no. I'm, I'm, I'm I'll pass. Mm. I know, I know, we were supposed to do it, and I'm sorry, but I, I. Oh, keep is that why you you just not finna do it with me? No. <laughs> Damn. You're not my child. <laughs> You're an adult. Don't I am an adult. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not going to do it? No. I didn't give birth to you. No. You ain't shit. All right. <laughs> All right. I guess, um, what we got next? What we got next There's, on the you, docket? We, you said we had a we lot of things. We do got a lot, but I'm trying to see how you mm. want to go about this. Because do you want to get mm. into Kanye? Because we got a lot to say about that. You we got what's... Drake. We got... Only fans who reneged. We got Candyman and Nia DaCosta and you, white people. You know what's we got so funny? Blood. You and know what's <laughs> so funny? Mandy. Mandy puts together this outline every week for us, right? Like, there's Mandy. Ha- Mandy needs notes. Mandy needs compartmentalization, of organization, all of the things. All podcasters do, and so successful podcasters. Thank do. you. Uh, so, <laughs> so when we're going through these things, right? It's funny because we're on a shared note list, and so she'll add things, and then I'll add things, and then she'll add things, and and sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> She'll add things in a certain column, right, that are in the current events, and those same things will be added by me under the <laughs> things we don't, don't give care. a fuck about. <laughs> she will literally be like, damn, Mandy really want to talk about this shit and like, didn't fuck. even see that I don't give a fuck about this shit. So, of course, we, you know, of course, Kanye releasing Donda is is on the current events, and I'm on under my category of things I don't give a fuck about, Donda. Donda. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donde Esta is finally here. Right. Donda uh, has, Donda, <laughs> Donda has Donde Esta right here. <laughs> um, I guess let's start there. Um, I, of course, want to start off by saying um, this is an album that I will not listen to. What? Um, How are we going to talk about it if you didn't listen to it? Because I want to talk about the antics of the bullshit around it. Oh, God. God damn it. Like, no. I'm. First off, I haven't really been a fan of Kanye since since a long time. Okay. What was my last song I really liked from him? Bitch, I was about to be petty and say through the wire. But, I mean, it's really been a long time (laughs) since I read. Oh, okay. The video with the black woman who not really black who was running and her ass was jiggling. What? Stacey Dash. What was that video? A win it all. All falls all down. Fall. Yeah, I really liked Kanye then. That's about the last time I really liked the little nigga. Oh, wait. And you he, didn't you didn't like anything else after that? No 808s and Heartbreak? No. Sing me a song. Um, what's the song he has with Jeezy? It's amazing. So amazing. Oh, yeah, that, you was, didn't that, like was, that? that was cute. And Heartless? The song Heartless that he had that actually rock bands oh, did I'm mad so covers Heartless. Of? Yeah. Okay, yeah, those were cute. Mm-hmm. But like, did I like jam them in my house like how I do money back yo no all of the lights you didn't like all of the lights Rihanna was in it right yeah I like Rihanna I like Rihanna we didn't like fade with with Tiana Taylor remaking flash dance choreo in the video I I could watch the video on mute that bitch is fine all right like I I could just watch Tiana Taylor dance like that's it but okay so I'm I'm not power we didn't like wow I'm just I'm trying to think of all the things that came after that 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 I really liked him then though. College dropout Kanye is that man. Anyways, um, with all of the antics recently, I you know how I talk about we all hypocrites and shit. Mm. This is one I ain't hypocrite on. I told y'all the only thing Yeezy got for me is the shoe bias. 
I do, and that's Adidas. And cool, his little Yeezy is on there. And even that, she still bought the Walmart version. I, <laughs> <laughs> I did, bitch. I, and I'm not even buying all real ones. I do have fake she Yeezys. She got the real right. ones. She, she did buy the real ones and the I did get the, the real ones. ones. I did get the real ones, but then I also bought the fake ones. <laughs> But um, no, I mean, when it when it comes to to Kanye, I feel like he's been someone who has maybe done more harm to the community than not in, in, in a really, really, really masterful way in him trying to run for president and take votes away from the Democratic Party and mm. being a part of the MAGA campaign. And then really coming out, and again, shout out to Van for checking him, saying that slavery was a choice. Also, while, while being the same guy who was the... George Bush doesn't like black people. Mm -hmm. I don't know who this fucking guy is, mm -hmm. but he's not someone that I really rock with. And again, there hasn't been much focus to me on the music as much as it has been the marketing tactics and garnering attention from, from the masses. And it sucks because I understand that we are in that day and age. Like we wake up, engagement matters. We want to see how many likes we have. Mm -hmm. We want to see how many comments we have. And unfortunately, I, I feel like Kanye has completely gone head deep into that realm more than just being an artist. Well, yeah, I mean, I think, I think, and I said this to you last week that it's about the experience. It's not about the music anymore, which I maybe, maybe for him, it's about the music, but for us, it's not really about the music because we're not as invested as we used to be in the music. And I mean, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to stay invested in an artist when they show their true colors around other things because because multiple things can be true at one time, right? Like okay. you can you can look at Kanye and be like, you know what? He is literally, undoubtedly one of the most talented musicians that we've seen in the last fifty years. Period. Mm -hmm. Top ten. But at the same time, some of his politics and um, some of his some of his influence has been abused over the course of the last couple years, and we've we've been pandered to as 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 fans. And so I think. You know, both of those things can be can be said and be true, and and we can look at the product. I mean, I I listened to it in the car last night, and I thought to myself, you know, I could appreciate I could appreciate this if I had been in a stadium or an arena and was really able to grasp the 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 layers of the actual music, right? Because the one thing that he did do as well, which I thought was really was really great and really brilliant, was he partnered with Stem Player, mm -hmm. which is like this small little device. Where you can literally play all of the the Donda tracks, and you can play you can play with the levels of the vocals, you can play with the actual stems of the instrumentation in every single song. So it, it kind of it he created an interactive experience for the fans to be able to participate in what we all think is his genius production, right? Mm. Which I think is cool, but to me, it's still the quality of the overall music does not exceed the presentation, and that's the part where I can't I can't as a fan keep showing up with the same enthusiasm because the quality of the music doesn't match the, the quality of the experience. The experience is, you know, he's setting himself on fire. He's, he's blocking himself in an arena and, and putting on this incredible showcase for everybody that's there. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's selling hot dogs and chicken fingers for $50. You forgot, you forgot the big part. What's the big part? He's aligning himself <laughs> and bringing on stage and giving a platform and visibility to the baby. Mm -hmm. who clearly is homophobic mm -hmm. against a whole mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. class of people. Yeah. And then you have also Marilyn Manson, who is not only a Satanist or atheist, whatever they're called. He don't believe in God and shit, whatever the, them people call Well, it. a Satanist believes in the devil. An atheist doesn't believe that God exists. Well, he's one of them. Okay. To me, it's about the same thing. Okay. But he's also currently mm -hmm. <laughs> undergoing not only sexual allegations, yeah. there are lawsuits yes. pending currently yes. for the abuse and I and, and I even went in trigger warning I went in to read the details mm -hmm. there was forced sexual acts there mm -hmm. was manipulation at mm -hmm. one point he pulled out a knife uh Marilyn Manson he pulled out a knife on a woman that he was dealing with from 2010 to 2013 I believe mm -hmm. and literally started cutting her shoulder and cutting her arm right. and made her bleed. So, so and and not even in no kinky way cuz y'all I know that there's some kinks into that shit. Yeah. This was against her will. Right. And so, again, it's it's about making a presentation purely for shock value, completely de devoid and detached of anything of any of any level of mo moral or social integrity at this point, right? Because now it's again, it's about the presentation. It's about putting on a show. So, in my mind, as far as he's concerned, especially considering all of the spiritual conversations that he's had over the last couple of years with his implementation of Sunday service 
and constantly discussing God and, and the importance of humbling yourself before God and all of that, he aligned himself with two people that are also outcasts, justifiably so, because of their crimes against humanity. Being a homophobe isn't technically a crime. However, hate, however, hate speech, hate speech and discrimination mm-hmm. and act proactive discrimination is a crime. Um, to cause harm and cause and, and incite violence is a crime, period. But all of those things combined make them sinners, right? In in Kanye's mind, all of these things are still a part of the show. They're still a part of paying homage and humbling ourselves before God. Every saint was a sinner mm. once and all of that. So again, to me, what makes it so hard to to even consider those things from an artistic standpoint is the fact that the music just isn't that great anymore. I wanna I, I wanna even lean a little bit more into the shock value, mm-hmm. the show, the marketing, the, mm-hmm. the, the 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 desire to have everyone talking about you at every point in time. Mm-hmm. That's not the Kanye I know from through the it wire. is. It, that's, that part that part is the same, but, but the music matched. But, then. but the, the music So you didn't matched. care. The you music didn't care matched. that Kanye showed the music up matched. and was like, fuck y'all, I'm the illest out. Nobody cared. We were all willing to take it because when you talk your shit. You have to back it well, up. Well, nah, you don't. And you know why you don't? Because he has been a part of a family like the Kardashians for the last decade. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you don't have to technically provide content or, or quality uh, content or products if you have a name on it. Guarantee you all that Kylie Jenner makeup is the same shit you could get from the fucking corner store. Same things you could get from fucking Alibaba, but she put her name on it. She's now about to fucking drop a swimsuit line. Do you think it's going to be any different than any of these other swimsuit lines? No, but she's going to be able to charge for this experience of her having her name on it. And Kanye has sat here and watched Mm -hmm. this whole family become millionaire and billionaire women Mm -hmm. off of their name. So I think... Him just seeing that for the last decade is like, okay, my name is my name. I don't have to give out quality content anymore. I don't have to do anything but show the fuck up because I'm Kanye. Those girls don't have to do nothing but show up and be the Kardashians. And they sit here and sell out their skims. They sit out and sell out every little makeup brand, everything that they've done. And so now Kanye is like, okay, I'm going to show up. I'm going to do me and I'm going to keep the girls talking. Because that is what, unfortunately, that is what our culture, that is what our society, that is what we are in right now. We are in the day and age where all you got to do, as long as you keep them talking, you win it. That's You're the, winning if you keep them talking. But that's the difference because the Kardashians came out and their their claim to fame has always been consistent. They have never mm-hmm. shown up as anything other than the reality stars that they are. And they've launched businesses by being reality stars. So in in whatever whatever framework, whether we agree with it or we don't agree with it, their talent has been being able to leverage themselves so much and so consistently over the last decade that every single one of them has managed to single-handedly create brands that are no that are that are that appropriate that creatively steal intellectual property which we have seen time and time that again part. and people still buy their shit so mm-hmm. Even if it's, and to be fair, Skims is good quality shit. I'm not even going front on Kim Kardashian. That's some good quality shit. I got a little setting powder from Kylie Jenner that actually does does the trick. So, oh yeah, me too. It was on sale at Ulta. It was a good, it was a, it was a good but purchase. But bitch, it was $8. That's why I purchased it. I was like, okay. But in my Normal mind. Normal price, $17, ooh, 8 I've got a deal right here. But in my mind, that that to me is still smart. Jeff Bezos has sing, has has become the richest man in the world by selling us all the shit that we were able to buy in our community convenience stores our entire lives. <laughs> Think about Valid. that. Think about the type of shit that we buy on Amazon. Bitch, I just bought fucking pads. Think about the type of shit we would go to Ikea for. <laughs> my ass just bought pads and dishwasher soap on Amazon, bitch. This is my point. I was like, damn, I gotta go down, downstairs. You can literally <laughs> go across the street. But, but again... And, 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 and it came, I ain't gonna hold you though. He's the richest man in the world, and he he did not reinvent the wheel. And this nobody is, this is, is reinventing we, this the is, wheel. This is why we hypocrites, bitch. I ordered something at motherfucking eleven at night. Do you know they got the motherfuckers working overnight, bitch? I ordered something at like eleven p.m. and it made it the next day. It said get it tomorrow, but I said, oh, I can have it when I wake up. This is what I'm like, saying. Like this is amazing. This so, is what I'm saying. I mean, but that's some genius shit. That's quality shit you just said what Kanye is giving us right now ain't quality but that's why I said that's that's the difference the, the Kardashian okay. the, because the Kardashian brand has always been the Kardashian brand 
Kanye West came out from the very beginning singing through the wire. He had a near-death experience while he was pursuing his dream and it pushed him to go harder. And everybody bought into that because we we underst- we have understood what it's like to face adversity and face challenges at that, at that degree mm-hmm. where you have to make a choice about what you want and who you are and who you're going to be in this world. And we followed that because that was the that was the path that he set out on, was relentless about, and became successful because of it. We bought into who he was. I don't care who he is now because mm. now who he is has nothing to do with what he's what he's making. And maybe it does to him, right? Which is which happens with artists sometimes. I can say that personally speaking. I've made music that I know is not going to resonate with fans. It's music that I love. It's shit that I'm making for me, which can be therapeutic but also can be narcissistic because it can be very, it can be only self-serving in the sense that you're mm. making stuff based on what you think is great and you think so much of yourself that you think that people showing up to celebrate you and your craft is 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 somehow validating of how great it is or how great you are and that's not the point that wasn't that wasn't the point that wasn't what brought us here and i think that's the part that's the part that's different right and that's why it's harder to follow the kardashians i know what i'm getting kim kim has been kim k has been kim k this whole fucking time sis has been wearing cornrows and dating black <laughs> they all have wearing cornrows dating black men and getting, right. and, and getting plastic surgery Ms. to look Wait. like black women Wait, the entire the time pic- did you see the pictures of kendall in mississippi with devin booker she looked no. so uncomfortable. <laughs> that shit was funny. Oh, no, I didn't see. She looked so uncomfortable. At this point, I, I just don't, I'm, I have, I'm separating the person from the art as long as the art is great. But if you show up as a person and you're mediocre and you're abusing the power of influence that you have by telling people that slavery was a choice, on top of wearing a MAGA hat and pen, then, and then realizing that the people that you, inst- that, that you inspired to follow you are now turning on you, you, sw- you flip the switch and then pander us with Sunday mm-hmm. service and God, because you know at the heart of every black family is it God. Is the church. And the church. Yep. So you decide that you're that you're then gonna spin this and and make and make sure that, that you will remind everybody that you still one of us, quote unquote, and then make music that's not great and 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 have everybody sitting around and talking about that. But this is and this is this is all what it's for. This is what it's for. It's so that we can come in and pot about this. Damn, we and sat here deep and did dive exactly what the fuck he wanted and us to do. And deep dive around a project that musically is mid. Okay, so I did want to outside of the music, something did come to mind. Hmm. All right. Hear me out here. Mm-hmm. So Kanye brings out a homophobe and a rapist. Okay. Okay. And I think we I know that this conversation was maybe had last year when we were in quarantine, mm-hmm. but a lot of times the the term that is used with women a lot is birds of a feather flock together. Mm-hmm. If I'm sitting here hanging out with hoes, it don't matter if I'm a virgin and they never had my coochie touched. I'm a hoe because I'm hanging with hoes. Correct. And what's crazy is this is a narrative oftentimes put on us by, by men. Mm-hmm. Like we are the company we keep. Mm-hmm. Now, Mm -hmm. why is this not something we acknowledge regarding men? Why is it not something to where we judge our men, our male friends, our partners by the men that they keep in company? Because because the things that we would judge those men over only ever are offenses against women and not against men. What do you mean? Say they're not against they're not against men. But the baby making homophobic comments, he will blame that on. A, a, a lack of understanding and compassion based on his upbringing, which most men can relate to, that they that they have faced some level of conditioning okay. that's needed to be addressed and unlearned in adulthood. So most men are going to right. grant him grace for that. Okay. Um, someone like a Marilyn Manson, which we see abuse we see against women, abuse against women. We see it happen all, all the, the time. time. We're also living in an in an era and in a time where. Uh, the the conversations around abuse against women are so common now yeah, that we're are. desensitized to it. You're right. So us being desensitized to it just means that we're 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 no longer continuing to push to change the narrative. We're normalizing the abuse and we're normalizing Damn. the acceptance of that kind of behavior and that kind of treatment, right? Because it's always been that way. But also right? but also what what you just said and as soon as you said it I was like, "Damn. That's right." Okay, so if they're making homophobic comments, all right, whatever. Like, a lot of people have things to unlearn regarding uh, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. Then the abuse against women, a lot of men don't even speak up on that because they don't want the skeletons to come out of their own closet. Correct. At some point in time, they have. However, you know what men don't like? 
snitches. Correct. Men who put other men in prison or men who come out and don't do what they're supposed to do as a man. Right. Only as it as it pertains to men. And when you said that, I was like, oh, bitch, you so smart. Y'all, y'all, I got a smart ass <laughs> motherfucking co-host that when I be sitting where I'd be like, damn, you, you right. The other thing to consider, oh, right? And this is not, and this is not smart. <laughs> and this is not an excuse, right? But this is something to consider. I had a really intense conversation with a friend of mine around 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 manhood as it pertains to black men in America. Ooh. Every single day. Every black man gets up and leaves his house and has to defend, validate, and confirm his manhood every day. Mm -hmm. Whether it's how much money you make, whether it's how smart you are, whether it's how good at your job you are, whether it's how well you can parent, how whether well it's you, how many hoes, how you many got. women you have, <laughs> how much flashy shit you have, how how much mm. you can flex on the next one. Every single, how strong you are, whether or not you can beat down somebody else or every, bear. Every single, every <laughs> yes. single level of of survival mm. and thriving for a black man has to do with defining your manhood. Mm. And so when it comes to someone like a the baby, something that that his unfortunately ignorant and immature ass will lean on mm. is the fact that he is a man who has had his manhood challenged and tested time and time again and he doesn't want to keep being backed into a corner to have to defend his truth while all while all it, all the while the only thing that would that it would take would be a level of awareness and consciousness to say, I can exist in my own in my own secureness as a man and not have to shit on somebody else. But unfortunately, we don't we're, we don't we haven't had enough of those conversations around manhood just existing as 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 the man and mm -hmm. not having to define it by all of these things and all of these prerequisites. Which, by the way, no other no other race of men in America has to do ever on a daily basis except black mm. men. So that's why I say in a moment like this, someone like a Kanye who has now succumbed to and gotten used to the ridicule and the and the and and the the um, reprimand for all of his choices and how he's chosen to define himself or his train of thoughts or his partner in life. Or, you know what I mean? Any number of things that you could go down the list and be like, this, this is all the shit everybody has come at Kanye and attacked Kanye over for the last few years. His tribe right now is anybody else that is a, that, and separate from Marilyn Manson, I don't understand the connection there. <laughs> but, but anybody else that can relate to the level of scrutiny that he's had to endure over simply existing. And I think that that's a, that's a dangerous place to be. Because then what you're, what you're saying is, you're not you're not encouraging you're not encouraging the growth above and beyond just existing how in the perception of other people. You're encouraging saying fuck those people. I'm a, I'm gonna stay right here in this negative frequency and dwell here because this is where I'm comfortable and this is where I'll get the most attention. That's a bad that's a, that's a sad place to be. And yeah, that's you know why who else do that? Ooh. serial killers and sociopaths yep they just keep killing yeah. people and killing people until they're finally fucking caught and thrown away in jail well, it, like, it also a lot of people live in their it does in their, in their negative toxic ways but and just think it's oh well as long as no one checks me about it I'm gonna keep doing it well, as long as I don't get caught I'm gonna keep doing it cheaters do that all yeah. types of bad people narcissists do that. Do and that. I'm not gonna sit here and support a nigga like fuck that little puss ass nigga I ain't supporting that nigga I ain't listening to him and then Walmart, put the goddamn shoes back, goddamn it. Because I didn't even get to get the other goddamn colors before you took the shit down. Fuck. Anyway, shit, this got a little dark. We gonna let we gonna it here liven it up a little Jesus. bit. Shit. We need a new song for this transition. We need, yeah. a, we need a happier, no, we need another happier song. You need a song. happier one? What, well, we what just, makes you happy? We just need a newer, a newer one. Boom, 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 boom. Any song that makes your shoulders want to go like this? La, 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 la. I mean, hey. I don't know. Okay, well, I think that we should maybe get a, into... Maybe a silk sign. Maybe leave the door open. Maybe a happy leave the door open or... You no, know. I'm sorry. I, my door stays locked. I grew up in Florida. I'm talking I'm about the I'm not leaving the door says, open. Not the concept. And that's even a... a, a well... <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I ain't leaving the door open for none of these niggas. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> If you ain't got a key, mm. you got to knock. The door will not be open for you. I actually put a slam lock on my shit. My shit closes. I done been locked out my own shit. <laughs> so I ain't keeping no door open, I don't bitch. know. We going to come up with a new song. We going we gonna to switch those up. 
Um, um, you want to talk about Drake, girl? Because he be making me happy with his little light skin ass. I want to talk about this cover art and how this popped up today. And I was like, oh, look at Nick Cannon family portrait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Look at these. Look at all these little pregnant emojis. United Colors of Benetton. All the races, all the sweater colors in the world. I hate like, you so much. <laughs> I hate you so much. I said, okay, lover boy. Tell me you tell tell me you don't like this cover art. Like oh, I, I mean, don't, because I hate it. I just Drake's cover <laughs> arts has been classics. Drake's cover arts have been things that have been able to be recreated, mocked, mimicked, uh, and and they're just timeless. As soon as you see the fucking clouds, you think of Drake now. Bitch, I look at my window and I be like, oh, look at Drake. There's only two. It's only that one and the and the take care one. That's, I love those that. Those are the only two. But those two. are classic fucking. Yeah, but he cards. also had the if you're reading this, it's too late written in scribble, I, like Harold, like Harold in a purple crayon. Okay, okay. Handwriting. But, but like, how many, on. but how many ways did we change that sentence to mean something else? But you knew it was Drake. Bitch, if I sit here and send a pregnant emoji to anybody, it ain't gonna make me think of Drake, bitch. You'd be surprised. No, you'd be no. surprised. He only got one bitch pregnant. Unless he, maybe this is him telling us, hey, since I already I mean, got a project bitch, pregnant, project I'm gonna impregnate all you. The project is called Lover Boy. So maybe there's, maybe that, maybe that's the, that's what he's, the, the idea he's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, I'm looking I don't, forward to I don't to, hate it. I don't hate know? it. I just, I rolled my eyes at it and I chuckled because I, I really did think, oh God, this is, this, this is an ode to Nick Cannon's life, but. <laughs> not an ode to Nick Cannon's That's really what I thought when I saw the shit. I was like, mm, this is interesting. But, you know. Um, well, I'm excited. It, uh, September 3rd. Which it, it, I, I'm excited for that. Um, What's your favorite Drake album? Did you, do you have ooh, a favorite Drake album? Take Care. Take Care is your favorite take album? Take Care your favorite one? is that one. But also, you know what? No, the one with the scribble. Because I do like, um, if I die, I'm a legend. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. If, like that probably. And that's one of those that you can play straight through. But what's crazy, yeah. and, and even me playing, Singing that song right now just I mean nothing is, is nothing, nothing was the same as my favorite Drake album. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Nothing was the same. That had Tuscan Leather. That had Worst Behavior. Motherfucker. Worst Never Behavior. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 305 to my city. That was my yeah. I'm sorry. Nothing was the same is definitely my favorite Drake album. Okay, yeah. I'm I'm excited. Are you looking forward to September 3rd I am. and and the album? I am. Um y'all, and I don't know if I'm finna get in trouble for this, but uh, <laughs> uh we got a little leak. We gonna, uh, we gonna play. We gonna we, play. We gonna play, we gonna play a, a Drake leak. Now listen, <laughs> y'all. I don't know. Just know a bitch is well connected. Y'all know this bitch. I found out on a Patreon episode. She actually got the invite to Wyoming from Kanye. So just know, <laughs> <laughs> like here I go on Patreon. Like we're talking about you know the, the rollout of, of Kanye on a bonus episode. And I'm like, yeah, the marketing. And I was like, not like we got invited to Wyoming and Bridget's like, <laughs> bitch. I did, and I was there, and I actually messed up my heels because I was wearing so Kate's in, in the mud, and I was that like, bitch oh, played her whole me. self <laughs> this in, the middle, in the middle of- It's brought to you by. <laughs> yeah, I got off the school bus. It was me and Theophilus London getting off the school bus. He was like, I'm glad I brought my flip phone, because <laughs> this is the only thing that has service. I said, you're damn right. Apple is letting us all the fuck down out here in the middle of nowhere with this at this ranch. <laughs> yeah, it's all, I mean, but again, it's, it, was, it was an experience. And the music was not great. <laughs> so it was like, the, beaut the best part about it was that we were all, it was busloads of black people on this ranch in the middle of Wyoming. I ain't gonna hold you. Listening to an listening to Kanye with a bonfire, bro. That was the experience. If it had, if my life depended on it, and they gave me a blank map, and they was like, "In order to to live, <laughs> where is, what is this Wyoming <laughs> on the map?" <laughs> now, bitch, I know, I know. Mandy, how just, to Mandy <laughs> just gave us her Legends of the Hidden Temple voice. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, I used to love that show. If oh. you had your life depends on the map, <laughs> and they said. Point now at where the fuck Wyoming is. You I would it? say, can I phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> do I get to use a lifeline? <laughs> because if I don't, I'm dying. Shoot me now. And I need to be shot. I need like, I don't know. Don't do not do no waterboarding or no torture or nothing like that that I be seeing in the movies. Like, just give it to me. I don't know. But then I will ask, do I get my last meal? Like, do can I, I get, get one last my time? Last? Can I have a meal before I answer this incorrectly? Because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> no, I don't know where Wyoming is. Um, but I wanted to play this because I'm excited about Certified Lover Boy. I feel like we're going to get Toxic Drake. 
the fact that all those women were pregnant. When is Drake not toxic? I mean, he plays it off by seeming like he's in love, yet he's one of them niggas that ain't never gonna wife you. So, but I'm just gonna add you into this song so you know, know I really I fuck feel with like you. I really do think I really do think Drake is looking for a wife, but I be thinking he changed his mind. He get he gets he gets to a certain place and then it's like, you know what, this was fun, but I can do better. Well, no, the problem is he apparently wants you to lie to him. Uh, so oh. this is this, this is a a, a sneak, y'all. Uh, this is lie to me. Um, and again, y'all, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to even be playing this, but damn, do I got to download it first? Oh, there it goes. Mm. There it go, baby. Mm. Let me put some music on over this. Hold on. We're going to put some air horns and shit. Come on, Drake. You know what I'm talking about? Whose voice is that? Whose voice is this? Someone from the South? Clearly, that's why I asked you. (laughs) (laughs) Hmm. Drake, you take everyone for granted. Oh, God, see what I mean? (laughs) He be lying. Now, whether this really makes and it goes, I don't know, y'all. I feel like this was something he wrote for a woman. <laughs> I feel like this is a track he wrote for a female artist and it just said no, nobody cut it or nobody kept it because this is some shit a woman would say. Yeah. Because you're Drake. <laughs> Why you always lie to me? Damn. I'm telling I'm, you, I feel like I'm I feel like I feel like he might have wrote that for somebody else. But listen, I don't need Drake out here talking about bitches lying to him as if he ain't got one that flew in. Now you fly out, and I got another one coming in. You ain't being honest. We all be lying. And I was actually having this conversation while well, we were last on night. track two of Donda. <laughs> Kanye West explicitly uh-oh, says, uh-oh. "Honestly, we all liars. Honestly." We all liars. Now, 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 Bridget, I really like you. What we're not going to be doing is quoting <sighs> Kanye here like he's Bible. Kanye still got bars, but his the music just I like your same. bars better. Honestly, you come in and thank drop you. bars every week. And thank you. I, I uh, say we stick to those gems because we're not going to be out here like, yeah, you know what Kanye said? Girl. No. <laughs> Mandy just said she prefers my bars to Kanye's. I'm high. That's yeah, such a they compliment. Are. You feel me? You be out here <gasps> dropping them little gems or whatever. But nah, um, I'm excited for new Drake. Um, I'm, I'm for I new actually Drake. too, I know that this was supposed to be something he released in like January, bitch. We've been waiting for this for a long time, but I actually like that we're getting Drake as the the temperature about to go back down. Oh, it's perfect. Like, Drake, 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 Drake loves some... to drop music I love right around his birthday, it. like around his birthday time. That's that, that's that good toxic Scorpio energy October's right there. October's very own, okay? Yeah. Even though, no bitch, I'm October's very own. I am right dab in the middle. You at the end. Scorpio's at the end. They don't even really count. Oh they don't God. even really count. I and I don't even really believe in the stars and moons, but bitch, because I'm a Libra, I'm going to stand firm in that we're the best sign. And that's that's all I really know. But that could also just be some narcissistic shit. I don't know. No? Honestly, we're all liars. <laughs> <laughs> she don't believe in the moons and stars, but my moons and stars are great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I just said it last week. We all hypocrites. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? We all hypocrites. We, we all, all lie. Pick, we all no one's morals or standards are above the, the next. And it's crazy because that there there is not even like the moral compass. Mm. Like... Mm-hmm. That that we all sit here and really believe like that we're gonna sit here and die on or, or, or lie on the the thing about cheating and and people believing karma and it coming back around like literally if you hop on a plane and go to another side of the world that what persists as moral standards and and karma isn't even the same over there. The way men can have multiple wives as long as they could take care of them and the way mm. that the idea of cheating is is completely different on 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 in in the Middle East and yep. Asia and. In Africa, yeah. and then we come over here by these goddamn Eurocentric standards, and y'all be sitting here mad that we sitting here trying to what follow what the white people in the Bible said. That shit was a game of telephone, mm. motherfucker. Way how many versions of that book is there? You know what I mean? Like, I just 
the, the idea of moral, the moral compass. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm going to sit here and say, I don't fuck with the nigga. Now, if y'all do, go on right ahead. Mm. But I say that to my homegirls, too. Bitch, I don't like the motherfucker, but if you want to keep giving them your coochie and fucking with them, you go right ahead. Mm. Like, at the end of the day, all of us are going to do what the fuck we want to do. It don't matter. And that's why P.J. Washington sitting here with his goddamn baby mama. <laughs> because motherfuckers are going to do what the hell they want to do. That's true. Always. Right. Always and forever. You're right. You're right. Um, was there anything else that you want to get to before we do Freshly Squeeze? Or we can do Freshly Squeeze. I actually had something, uh, but we can maybe bring it up for um, the TV portion uh, yeah. regarding Candyman. I did actually want to talk about Crackers. Because, you know, <laughs> white people going white. <laughs> How and, did we? Okay. <laughs> How? That segue well, was, okay. a, was a leap. You, okay, left, it that was was, a leap. you just climbed over crates to get to but that segue. It was sis. a leap. We talked about homophobe. There's a tie here. Okay. All right. Tie shit. it in. Tie I'm, it I'm in. tying it in. Um, so for those of you who are not aware, Tony Hawk. Now, let me tell y'all why the fuck I even know this cracker. Tony Hawk had a video game when I used to play PlayStation 1 back in the day. Wow. And literally, it was Mandy the best Mandy, who hates game. gamers, played PlayStation 1. As a child. Imagine that. <laughs> As a child. As a child. Oh, bitch, that Frogger, Mortal Kombat, uh, Mario. <laughs> Mario Kart. Mario Brothers. Like, Did I had you ever to save, play Mario Kart? I had to save the princess. I wasn't just doing <laughs> I had to save the princess and I was getting the mushrooms. I ain't do little go-kart shit. Which now. is still Mandy's life. That, that was <laughs> Oh, bitch. I'd be on the shrooms she, every day, bitch. She'd be on the shrooms trying to save herself, listen, the princess. Here's the thing, and this is how you know you, you grow in age. <laughs> Literally last year, I was condemning all of you druggies. And you now were. I'm like, I microdose. <laughs> I wake up and take a chocolate. Now she's over here counting her shrooms while we head into sober <laughs> September. Like, I can't drink shit, bitch, but if I put this in my curry chicken <laughs> it don't anyway, count <laughs> no so tony hawk had a video game that was masterful he was probably the only skateboarder i even knew right a- until like uh nerd started getting jeremy rogers and yeah and what yep. was the kennedy guy little fine man uh terry kennedy. terry kennedy god damn that chocolate man is shout out, shout out to the ice cream team they were so out. that was such a fun that era. was a whole was era. A fun era um well tony hawk is releasing a skateboard a uh, drop where he is claiming to have put his own blood Ugh. um in the skateboards. I want to kind of why read, are we still girl, doing this? Girl, why are we still putting blood? Girl, I don't in know. Things? I don't know. I don't know. I did watch Chop the other day and he was cooking with uh blood soup and I was like, "Oh, this is interesting." And so, and let me guess, they're, it's, they're celebrating this now with Tony Hawk. And, it is. It is being celebrated. And everybody and looked at Lil Nas X crazy when he put blood in, in Air Max. So that is actually what I'm bringing up. So Lil oh. Nas X let his voice be heard after news began circulating about Tony Hawk's latest collaboration. Mm. According to Insider, the skateboarder icon teamed up with the beverage company Liquid Death to create 100 limited edition skateboards. Each deck is designed with blood-infused paint, that was created using red paint and vials of Tony's actual blood. Now that Tony Hawk has released skateboard skateboards with his blood painted on them and there was no public outrage, are y'all ready to admit y'all were never really upset over the blood in the shoes, Lil Nas X wrote on Twitter. And maybe you were mad from some, for some other reason. Um, of course, people are sitting here saying, well, no, it was that it was satanic and that it was the devil's blood. Now, bitch, who know the devil to even get his blood? D- nobody. I mean that that sounds that sounds homophobic in itself to, but, to make it about the fact that his his blood is somehow less his blood less is pure lo- that part <laughs> than Tony Hawk's blood that part and I'm I'm actually glad that he that he stuck up for it yeah. because a part of this that I wanted to even talk about it goes outside of uh, gays it goes outside um, of the public quote unquote outrage I want to talk about the simple mother fact uh, the simple motherfucking fact. That one is white and one is black. Mm-hmm. And in this age, in this era, I'm dealing with it now with my other show. Y'all know we done sat up here and talked about how the white bitch got 60 million. Sorry, she's not a bitch. Sorry, let me. The white other podcaster who talks about sex positivity and her own sexual journey getting $60 million mm-hmm. from Spotify. Mm-hmm. Myself. Yeah. And you're- black woman, black show, black podcast with the same content. We literally are having problems selling to advertisers. Right. Podcast movement just happened in Tennessee. And 
Charlemagne, who shout out to Charlemagne, super, super definitely rides for black creatives in a way yep. that we going to go against the grain and we going to sit here and show them that we can do it. I know that right. it was a thing even with the title of his book he talked about. Yeah. He couldn't have the word fuck or or something on his book, but yet a white author can come out here and, and drop a New York Times bestseller called Fuckity Fuck Fuck in a fucking ass. And it'll fucking be a bestseller. And it's just crazy to me that we as creatives, specifically black creators, I know that podcasting is new. We now have all of these platforms like Complex and we have fucking, I don't know, there's just a ton of fucking platforms. We have LeBron James with Spring Hill and what he's doing and Uninterrupted. And I love it, but we're so far behind. But also to a space to where there's products that we're not going to be able to drop because we're, we're simply because we're black. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get certain advertising dollars. We could have identical content to a white counterpart and may not be able to be aligned with even certain advertisers off the simple fact that we're black. And guess what? If we do, this now goes down to the social media girls. Right. We're going to get less. Right. We're going to get less. It just is what it is. And it just, it really pisses me off because I know his point was the fact that maybe it was a homophobic outrage, but now it's simply, it, there's literally lines drawn, black and white, and it's clear as fucking day. Yeah, but I think, I mean, clear as day. What's troubling too for me, right, is that I think about even watching White Lotus, right? Did you watch the end? Yes, the, the whole thing. Lotus? The whole thing. White Lotus is such wait, a, wait, wait, so brilliantly on. written, you, yes. You want to give a spoiler alert? No, 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 no. But oh, you're I, I want to, well, we, because we touched on it briefly, like either last week or the week before, we were talking about the the rant that the white, the, the very, very wealthy, privileged white mother goes on about the yes. fact that now the tables have turned and all of a sudden now her white son is a part of the disenfranchised, yes. marginalized population because everyone's so woke and it's, you know, mm. it should still be all lives matter and all that fucking self-deprecating shit that nobody cares about when it comes from white people and rightfully fucking so because there's no, tipping the scale for equality does not make you disenfranchised either neither here nor there um when all around those conversations right the only thing i can think to myself is i remember i remember a couple i remember years ago having a conversation with um producers that were from steve harvey's daytime show right mm. and it, it and us having a conversation around how dope it is that you know, someone like a Steve Harvey has been able to capitalize on his popularity and his comedic nature and his mm. and his culture, right? Being a black man and his culture in a way that that is non-threatening. It doesn't give it doesn't give the same kind of like shuck and jive vibe like Terry Crews. That Wayne Brady, that sometimes Wayne Brady can give that someone like a Terry Crews. Well, yeah, Terry Crews. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, right. But that's a, that's, well, that's, a, that's a whole other. Well, that's that's a whole other. Anyway, right. um, I think I think in 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 those conversations, that conversation, I remember specifically somebody saying, you know, white people in in these in these positions with a lot of money to cut checks and really and approve budgets and stuff like that, they don't know how to treat situ. They don't know how to treat conversations and sit in situations around representation mm. unless unless they can figure out a way to familiarize themselves with inclusion. Let me, let me, I'm going to explain what I mean by that. Right. We, the last like two or three years, right. Especially in the last year with all the protests and things like that for yeah. black lives matter last year, it really brought to the forefront, the conversation, the importance of the conversation about diversity and inclusion. Right. And all of a sudden we start seeing all these campaigns and all these <laughs> companies coming forth, like oh, the pandering. <gasps> now we're hiring all these black people that, that are overqualified for the diversity officer job, but we're going to give them the diversity officer job. And now, now that now we're glorifying the diversity hire and trying to celebrate it and paint it as if it's some special, some special chair Badge position of honor. To yeah. Wear. That you like, have, yeah. because now you're the, now you're the token person that gets to make decisions for everybody that's the, of your race. Yay. And it's like, how do we, how do we go from not having representation in this, in this, in this major space, right. To now the only way we can figure out how to include it is if it is the token. Mm. Right. And right. I think and I remember that the, one of the one of the producers saying to me, like most of these and he was white, by the way. And he's like, most of these white people are really stupid. And they think that the only way that they that that something that that a that a black creative or a black contribution has to be 
has to has to has to win in a in a space and be supported by black people first in order for it to be valid in this space. That's how stupid these white people mm. are. And I thought to myself, you know, it's it sucks, but it's but it's true, right? The same way that all these years we and, and all these documentaries now are, are are coming out about and around the fact that, you know, black culture and everything that that black culture has has created and been the foundation for is celebrated and uplifted, but black people are not. And I just I think that in the space that we're in now, around the conversations about representation now, the representation, the, the, the quality of the representation is still being treated as the representation. Right. So if a black a black creative is being celebrated in that way, are we are we all across the board celebrating it because it's so because it's that fucking good or are we celebrating it because it's the black representation that's, in that space that, and in that, that moment? And I think that's an important thing to consider as a black creative, right? Because we're not just in competition with other black creatives. We're in competition with with everybody. You know yep. what I'm saying? But more more often than not, we're in competition with other black creatives. We have to be the best black creative to be the representative for black creatives in a white space. That part. And that sucks. It does suck. But I do think that it's a reality that we're faced with all the time, right? Like, how do we how do we bridge that gap then between being the token, the celebrated token, because we're just happy to be here, and and really and really carving out a space where we can just be we can be celebrated merely for existing, just like we talk about all the time. We want to see I want to see more black shows about like run the world, where it's just like black people just existing, being cool, insecure, Atlanta. Atlanta. It doesn't always have to be, you know what I'm saying? Some, some right. like, oh, we have to talk about, you know, the racism and the gentrification in the hood. Like, no, that's not that. That's not the only like the black experience is not monolithic in that way. We have to be. I mean, able Summer to, Walker to actually just came out and said that, but I think that that's something that we have to unlearn as well right now. Like she, yeah. she said that she made a post and she made a whole lot of posts, and that's the one thing I don't care about. Her and the London baby mama drama right now, I'm not going to talk about it, but she did speak to the fact that as a black woman, she feels teased or ridiculed for the gothic dressing that she does. Um, and also, if you think about it, the nerd culture, there's a whole nerd culture. Yep. There's a Comic-Con black culture. Um, there's podcasts that, that speak to the gamers, the, uh, the K-pop from yep. black creatives. And unfortunately, we still, unfortunately, as people see ourselves as mon mon monolithic, yeah. we don't allow black people to be different. I, I was talking to my to my homeboy, grew up in Atlanta, and he was like, "Yo, I remember when I when when I when I changed schools, they treated me differently because I spoke differently. Like, and I know we've we we've talked. You know, he said he was called an Oreo growing up. There's mm. literally no way for us as people, though we aren't monolithic, we don't view ourselves." outside of that right so the conversations again regarding nerd culture gothic culture k-pop all of these things in which are in our culture as well no one's really picking up the 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 pen and pencils and really pushing forward those conversations as it pertains to what our culture really is our culture is still hip-hop but no it's so much more than just that and i just don't think that we've been able to put our our you know, us in other spaces right. to really acknowledge how non-monolithic we are. Right. And speaking of culture, and I think I think this is this is this is a segue because I just I just talked about this with my partner this morning and we were discussing the entertainment the, the entertainment that is <laughs> Jake Paul and everybody that he has decided to, <laughs> to challenge in the boxing ring and oh. somehow managed to beat up <laughs> in the boxing <laughs> ring this man is undefeated at this point and y'all keep y'all keep is trying to fight him, him or is it like nah. WWE no 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 it's really boxing oh. but but Tyron Woodley is an MMA fighter so and I'm not a huge I'm not a huge fan of boxing and MMA but I know that there's a that there's a massive difference in the art, right, and in the craft between MMA fighting, which the rules and regulations are totally different oh, wait, than actually boxing. Him? Yeah, Jake Paul won by a split decision. He won. Do you know what sucks? I really only wanted him to lose because did you see the clip where he talked about the culture with the chains? I did, oh, but it was such a good clip. But I will say, I didn't think it was that good of a clip because Jake Paul is not a culture vulture. Jake Ooh, Paul, talk to it. Jake Paul does not make any of his money or or pander to or cater to a black audience ever. At all. Everything on his YouTube is whitey white. Is white boy shit. Ritz cracker. It's rich board white boy shit. It's yep. it's like wannabe X Games 
fucking Project X want to be type Tony Hawk. Want to be t- <laughs> like he's not doing. He's not. He's not appropriating any of the culture. He's not doing that because he has tattoos and chains. You know how many white boys have tattoos and chains? Right. Travis Barker ain't out here appropriating nobody. Right. Tattoos, chains, <laughs> oh, piercings. Valid. So in my mind, I, I I want us to try to get away from and also and he and he won. So it's like now we <laughs> now we can't we could just hate him. We could just hate him because he's making a mockery and a foolery of some of these uh, some of these these black men and these black fighters that we that we hold on a pedestal, but He's not a culture vulture. I think I think we could just say we don't like some. It's not like a Chet Hanks who is on Instagram every other day with a Jamaican accent. <laughs> that Bro, to me is culture. Really, like you, that to me really, is that to me is 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 culture vulture behavior. Like that's a little different. You know what I'm saying? Jake Paul ain't no culture vulture. He not he not doing nothing for the. He's not getting no money and making no deals. Trying to be anything other than a rich white boy from Calabasas or Thousand Oaks, wherever he's from in California <laughs> and making his, making his YouTube videos with his drone in his backyard with his rich brother. Like, no, he's not a culture vulture. Okay. You're right. Validare. Cause but, I'm, I've been seeing a lot of that. One thing people, I, I, people, I didn't pay to watch that, that fight. People saw watch. the fight and they were like, you know, they thought, they thought Tyron Woodley did a great job reading him because he had chains. Of, no, I like the clip. It was I, a was, clip. I was like, mm. Mm-hmm. Only because I just really like being petty. I thought it was petty because he had nothing to say back. <laughs> no, well, because I mean, <laughs> he really. It's also he didn't back. he didn't want to defend it because it's like I don't care. I don't care. I, I don't about care this. about that. <laughs> but also, he doesn't know he he's not familiar. He doesn't know enough about the culture to make any defenses anyway. You know right. what I'm saying? And I think I think something else that that is culture related that that. Um, Crossed my path this weekend was, and we'll get into TV later, but I do want to mention um, and shout out to Jack Harlow because that he, is the only, I ain't going to hold you, the only white person I'll watch. I love you some Jack Harlow. So Jack Harlow, can you come sit, us, sit with love, us on the couch? We love Jack you Harlow. You and Drewski, I need both of y'all, motherfuckers, but I love me some Jack Harlow. We <laughs> love, um, yeah, it's like the, <laughs> we love, we love, yeah, we love, we love Jack Harlow. Um, my girl DJ <laughs> Millie is his, is his tour DJ, so shout out to DJ yes. Millie as well. But Jack Harlow was on this the latest this week's episode of The Shop um, on HBO. Yes, damn, I missed. And it's so no good. spoiler alert. Is it good? Jack Harlow is such an articulate, eloquent artist, mm. and to hear him talk about his love for hip hop, but also his quest for fame, which he was not, which he okay. was at ad, ad completely, admittedly, sharing about wanting fame and wanting to be good at his craft, simul- equally and simultaneously. Which is rare, right? Most mm. people, most people start out want to be famous more than they want to be respected in in their in their the quality of their craft. He wants both, and he was talking about being in Atlanta and going in and listening to rappers that just that just right off the dome punch rappers they call them, right? Like you just go in and you just you 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 spit your shit and then you stop and then you spit your shit and then nobody's sitting in there writing the shit down and coming up with the con- everybody's just going in off the strictly off the dome, right? And he was just saying that it was something that he studied during the pandemic. And he got big over the pandemic. Think about it. He did. He blew up during a time when the world was shutting down and kept studying his craft. And he still takes pride in wanting to get better and wanting to grow and wanting to learn and be a sponge. And it, it was so refreshing to hear that from a young artist, right? Especially as a young white rapper, right? Because you always think about... You know, when we talk about culture vultures, we talk about, you know, the fact that so many, so many people, so many, so many people who are young, the younger generation in general does not necessarily have a a firm grip on the foundation of the culture, right? And the development of hip hop culture. And so when we have those conversations around the development of the craft, most of these kids are accidental, accidental stars. You know what I'm saying? It's like they, they got, they hit one, they got one good record and then all of a sudden blew up and it's like, oh my God. And then and then they disappear and it was like well they were famous for fifteen minutes. I ain't gonna hold you. That's on my bucket list. This ki- what? I, I want to be a one hit wonder. Okay. So th- <laughs> I do, Bridget. I told you, you just hit me. I just want to do like chocolate a, starfish is gonna be your hit. I know so, it, it is, and we just gotta is. make it to like. Chocolate and then we gotta make it like how uh, Saint John does his songs. It gotta be okay. something that could cross over and be like house. All right. It could be R and B. It could be hip hop. We can remix. Like, we gotta remix it like a motherfucker. Okay. You feel me? Oh yeah, Tr- uh, Jack need- Harlow. <laughs> shout out to Jack Harlow for <laughs> not being for Harlow. not being a culture vulture for really respecting and appreciating the craft, the origins of it, and wanting to contribute to tell his story in a very authentic way, and. Yeah, for just for just being dope, for being a dope kid, man. Super dope. 
Not honestly, we're all liars. I hate, I hate, I honestly, hate it here. We're all liars. But we're not lying. We really do love you, Jack Carlo. So we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, it, it it is interesting, and and I'll just say, I'll just say this before I get out here, even tacking on to what you said about Jack Carlo. The, everything involves you really studying the craft. So whether you mm-hmm. want to be a videographer, whether you want to be a podcaster, don't sit here and think I don't have emails daily that come to me that tell me about what the podcast industry is doing. Yeah. But also I sit here and look at what everyone is doing, how they're building. Um, again, you know, I love a good outline, I creating do. segments, adding things. Me and you constantly talk about Always. what else we can do Always. outside of that. We, y'all get to see a little bit of that on Patreon. Yes. Um, and, and actually I, I want to shout them out, but also I hope that it gets better. Y'all know I have super love for the, I am athlete, uh, mm-hmm. platform and they yes. just extended it to LA. Oh, dope. And I just, I just, I, I miss the regular group. So I hope we get them back. They, uh, went to the girls got a veg, okay. which is like some okay. soccer players. And now they're out in LA and they have Duke, Nick Young, Brandon Jennings and nice. some other football players. Okay. It's different. Just know everyone can't sit in front of a microphone. And I think that people think that everybody can't go. Potting is is just, oh, we just gotta sit here and have a conversation. Oh, that's easy. And it's it's so much, so much, so much more than that. And mm-hmm. um I really just hope that anyone looking to get into anything creatively or any passion with artistry is to learn from the people around you mm-hmm. and and also just try to show and up stay humble. better. And, and when we say I we always hate the, I hate the humble I, yeah, word. Don't bring up that word. But I think the, the the main thing that I think we can replace the word, because you know I, I bitch love words, honey. <laughs> the word we can replace with humble, which I think forces a level of humility, is to stay hungry and curious. Mm. Stay curious. Because if you're curious and you're always eager to absorb something new, it's going to require you to acknowledge that you don't know everything and you don't have mm. all the answers, which in itself is humility. So be curious. Stay curious in your life and in your craft. Always be open, open and curious. Because if you're seeking something out and you're seeking to know more, you're going to have to get your answers from somewhere else. There's always going to be a bigger, greater, higher source than what you're used to in order to get to that next level. So that that itself personifies humility. So don't be humble. Be curious and keep growing. Oh, curious George face <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and now it's time for Freshly to... Squeezed. Yeah. Yeah, baby. That was great. Oh, I'm getting good. <laughs> what is that? That's a bass, right? Yeah. I got bass. You bass had a little, in my voice. It was a little, it was a little it bass was a in my moment. voice. Y'all know I love me some motherfucking good ass music or whatever. Um, and actually, I guess we should start here. Um, coming up on our fresh, uh, not our freshly squeeze. Coming up on our Patreon, we got to do an episode with yes. Kenny Hamilton. Yes. Um, and for those of you who don't know Kenny Hamilton, literally just look him up. He has a lot. Uh, his catalog, his resume, his everything, his, his journey, his journey. There we go. Which is really what we love, right? And if you're not subscribed to Patreon, I, I, since I implore you, yes, <laughs> I implore you to subscribe because as much as we have, oh, we wait, have, wait, this month is about to be good. This month is crazy. Hold on, we got Kenny Hamilton and we got a freshly squeezed. Yes. Oh, our freshly squeezed. Uh, let's talk about it. We our got freshly to. squeezed segment is unlike anything any other podcast is doing. I'm not even going to tell y'all what it is. You just have to subscribe to understand. Yeah. Um, where we get to sit down with artists and talk to them about their journeys. And they share with us a number of things. Uh, unreleased tracks, unknown facts about them, about their stories, and other things. Special things. So you got to make sure you subscribe. There, and of course, it ain't just an interview. You know, I'm going to go in there and try to figure out who they dating, who broke their heart, and right. all that stuff. So right. it's just like... If you guys were able to listen to the episode with L.A., you know, we sit down there. And again, we there's some sort of personal rapport as well with the people we sit with. Yeah. And I think that that definitely helps. Yeah. Uh, between the, the yeah. you know, the both of us. But so, last week we got invited to Rotimi's. Yes. Album, uh, listening. album listening party. And no, it wasn't at a stadium like Kanye. But it was what I know a listening party to be. It was intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, at the cabin. It was at the cabin, which NYC. is black owned. Kenny Hamilton is a co-owner, is a of, the co-owner of the cabin. So if you're in New York City... Honestly, one of my favorite brunch spots ever is the cabin. It's on Fourth Street and Avenue between Avenue A and Avenue B. So if you're in New York, definitely make sure you. And hit if them you're up. looking to definitely uh, support Black owned businesses, there you go. The every everything is great there. The bartenders are great. The service and the is vodka. Great. 
The vodka. Oh. Kenny's vodka is. Yes. Is a, and I can't remember the name of it and I'm so mad. Me neither, but I drank it all night. You did. I probably, I was like, damn, nigga, what a case is that? Cause I, I was and drinking listen, all. We gonna, we gonna try and get some of those cases before, before, uh, before this month is out. Um, but basically I, I loved it. So Kenny Hamilton, uh, is working with Rotimi now and mm-hmm. as one of the artists. And again, for those of you who don't know, he was one of the people who helped found it and procured and grew with uh, mm-hmm. Justin Bieber's uh, journey. Yes. Um, but Rotimi came, has been a long time since I've seen that motherfucker. He just, <laughs> he left New York and said, I'm never coming back. He did. Um, so hopefully we can bring him on the couch when he comes back to New York. Mm-hmm. But we all got to sit there and and listen to this music, and it was really, really, really great. I know he just dropped the video to Decide mm-hmm. uh, this last week, and that's actually... The, I, I want to play a little bit of Decide uh, while talking about this, because Rotimi, a lot of us know him as Drake from Power. Yes. And kind and of... Ni- like, and Mr. Nigerian Butterscotch from Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I wanted to play Decide, and then I did also want to play a little uh, snippet from my favorite song on the album, which is number two. But this is Decide... Uh, y'all could go to YouTube now and see the video, and it's beautiful. Did you see the video? No. Oh, it's hot. I'm sad we Look, don't have Alex damn today. Scream, man. This would have been the perfect time to be like, Alex, play Road to Me's new video. <laughs> um, beautiful R and B, and I know y'all y'all know me to have the hippity hop. I got some for you, but. Hmm. He's so talented. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, that's a sign. Mm. Um Again, Rotimi, just beautiful. Just really, really, really. The whole project, y'all, it's called All or Nothing, um, and that just dropped. So if you haven't yet, get All or Nothing from Rotimi. Um, really, 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 really good. Um, mm-hmm. Love it. I, I want to pass the ox to you because I know you got some shit, and then we could come back to me. Mm-hmm. I know um, if you guys were listening during, um, we already talked about Donda album. So <laughs> If y'all thought y'all was going to get some Donna album music, nope, not here, bitch. I hate you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let me go ahead and pass the ox, though, uh, to Bridget. Go ahead and tell us what you got, girl. What you got, baby girl? Um, So, Cleo Soul. Y'all know I love an R&B. I love an R&B moment. Cleo Soul, first of all, congratulations to Cleo Soul. She recently gave birth. Yes. Um, and the the project, obviously, this is the insp- her inspiration to... My inspiration for this project was becoming a mother because the project's called Mother. Mm. Um, and I mean, the whole project is really incredible, but um, I'm trying to figure out which song I wanted to play here because there's so many that I really, really in love, really enjoyed. And I'm happy that it's a full length album. Can we talk about that for a second? Because it's 12 tracks. Okay. And usually we see like, you know, five, six song projects or 27 song projects and what, what do you between, like you like the 12 12 is a I good like number the 12. for 12 i think i think between between 10 and 15 is a great number and i and or actually 10 and 13 if i'm being honest between 10 and 13 okay. is a really solid place um for me to be because i just think that you know overall it it, it, it takes practice and time to figure out which songs cohesively fit right and sometimes when mm. when a project when a project is themed or it's, you know what I mean? There's a specific in, there's a, a specific um, concept around the whole thing. It's hard to really, to create things that, that as an artist you feel confident are as the same quality as the singles. And right. I just like to see, I like to see whole, um, whole, whole projects like that. So I'm going to play, um, man, I'm going to, I would, where's this, hold on. I'm going to play um, Sunshine because I love, I love this song. I thought she really just... Mm. Mm. I 
Oh, I like this. You know I love a bass line. You do. Mm. I, I, I'll give you a bass line, baby. I like that girl. I just I'm think right. she really, um, she really came into her own with this project. What was the other one? Heart Full of Love. There was another one that she, I can't remember the name because I was, it was literally, this was a song for, this was an album for me that was on repeat. So I was and one so of those even things if you, that you play. Even if I don't want to be a, a mom, this nah, is you'll just you feel too. Well, because I think I think the beautiful thing about motherhood for so many women is that they they find themselves. In in their purpose and in alignment, and I think mm. any time as a person, especially as an artist, no matter what it is, as a creative person, when you find your purpose and you can really really pinpoint that that sense of that sense of of freedom that comes with knowing who you are, knowing what you're meant to do, is just beautiful. And so this was this was a song too that that felt like honestly a praise and worship song. Like this was giving me church vibes, right? This is called Heart Full of Love. Am I supposed to play hip hop after this? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can't. Oh. Uh. This is Cleo Soul, y'all. Yeah. We working on playlists for y'all, all right? We working on it. See what I'm saying? Got spiritual. All right. Especially with the pandemic. <laughs> Just don't waste your time on no fuck shit. <laughs> you know, I actually do believe that. I believe if you walk with a good heart, with good intent, mm -hmm. with no malice, mm -hmm. it all comes back. Always. It comes back. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to send this to a couple of my baby mamas. <laughs> Toxic king. I, <laughs> I can't send this to some of my baby mamas. Oh, this is no. beautiful. So, yeah. Not it's, calling me a toxic king. You said you was going to send this to baby mama. A couple, bitch, that's the toxic that, king. Thank that, you for sending me an angel. <laughs> what? No. Um, <laughs> fellas, don't you dare. Do not send this to your baby mamas if you're not trying to get her back. Don't waste Don't waste that queen's time. Think of yourself, sis. So, yeah. Um, shout out to Cleo Soul because I know that we just put everybody in their feels. Um, but it's such a beautiful project beginning to end. And like I said... Um, whether you're a mother or not, you know, sometimes it's just nice to listen to warmth. And I'm I'm I love listening to a project from an R&B artist that's a woman that has nothing to do with being heartbroken by a man. It was refreshing to get into that. You know what I'm saying? Every right. every every project that we hear from an R&B an artist that's a woman always stems from some level of heartbreak. And this whole project is about you know, showing up as the as the woman that she feels like she's meant to be in her life and in her purpose, and it's beautiful. It's light. Everything on this project is as beautiful as it's light. Nobody's on here talking about you know being toxic, and you know, it's not. It's, there's no. It's none of this is about none of this is about men at all. It's all. It's that. all about. It's all about love, like a different kind of love. When I tell you two ladies, and listen, I know I'm only thirty, so I know what the real aunties and uncles listening are like. Little little girl, if you don't shut the fuck up, but. <laughs> You literally do show up differently in your relationship with friends, with mm. men, with family members, when you truly do realize who you are yes. and you walk in your purpose Yes, and you're able to look in the mirror and be like, I know exactly the things I need to still work on mm -hmm. and I'm willing to work on those things. You show up differently when you acknowledge your faults in the past and you also take the step forward to really do the work to change. Yes. And this is a conversation Bridget and I have been having a lot lately mm -hmm. uh, because we both go to therapy weekly. Mm -hmm. um, and I just know 
meeting you at the time I met you, meeting my partner at the time I met him, my friendships now, I literally say, if I met you a year and a half before, I tell my man, if I met him two years before, <laughs> oh, nigga, we wouldn't be here. Oh, same. The relationship wouldn't be what it is. Same. Literally based on who I know I was yeah. then yeah. And, and the ways that I didn't acknowledge how I was showing up for people or or if I even really gave a fuck, for real, for real, right. you was going to get toxic Queen Mandy and I was going to sit here and tell you, hey, this is hoe one, hoe two, hoe three, <laughs> and I'm not getting rid of them. So do you want to be hoe four? And then <laughs> when it came to, to, to friendships, to work, and I mean, I guess that's still the thing. Work does come first to me. Yep. Um, And luckily my friends are okay with that. Yeah. And that's still a, a place though where I'm like, okay, happiness has to come outside of of work for me. And that's just been my hard part because now I've made all these babies and businesses. Right. And I wake up, it's the only thing on my mind. But I say that to say to anyone listening who's who maybe in, you know, their 30s now or and, and still feels like I don't know the purpose I'm walking in, when I tell you everything falls like a domino effect in line mm -hmm. once you know who you're showing up as. Right. And even if you don't know, I think once you once you make a decision, right? That so I, was, I was talking yep. to um talking to uh, my homegirl earlier today, and she says she said it all the time, right? And I'm, it's I, I it was it's gonna take me into the TV portion, so I don't want to dive too deep into this part. But I will say that, um, you know, a lot of my friends are inspiring to me because they follow their intuition, right? Mm. Like my one of my really good friends, who's also an artist, Tiffany Red. She also has a, a shout out to Tiff. Shout out to Tiff. She's got a, a beautiful, a really incredible foundation that is. Um, she's a, a phenomenal, powerful advocate for songwriters, um, and and artists and creatives in the music space. And one thing I've always loved and admired about her is the fact that she follows her intuition the first time around. And it's like if she feels something is off. She that's it. She, it's time to move. I'm not going to stay nowhere. She, she felt like it was, she left LA before I left LA last year. It was like, nope, it's time. I don't like it. I'm just, I'm going to just go and packed up her shit. And I just wish moved. I could be like that. You know what I'm saying? She didn't second guess. She didn't overanalyze. She don't overthink. But what she explained to me today, which I think is, and is really the case for a lot of people is the anxiety around <sighs> being stuck is so much worse to her than the feeling of making, of having made a mistake. Right? Like the, the, the pain Ooh, of the pain. Wait, say that again. Say that again. The anxiety around being stuck in a situation is more painful to her than the than the fear of making a mistake mm. or living with a mistake based on a decision that she made, right? Mm. And to me, that's that's such a, a powerful place to be for anybody, right? Not even just a creative, just Girl, a I person. I wish I could be there. <laughs> this every day. Oh. I question myself all the time. And it's not to say that she doesn't, but... With her, the intu the intuition for her is paramount. Like trusting her gut is paramount. Like that's her that's her only means of survival. And I think that's such a that's a beautiful place to be. And so, in talking about all those things, I'm like, man, this is like, this is this is we're at that point in life where we get to make we get to make decisions. The older we get, the more is weighing on the decision, right? The stakes get higher the older we get. We feel like we're we're limited more physically, or we don't have the same energy and brain capacity anymore to learn new things or pick up new crafts or try new careers. You know what I mean? We we get we get we get burdened down with the idea of what we or we think we should be or who we think we should be. And sometimes the simplest thing, the simplest decision, just making a small choice, right? Even a small adjustment will will be the tipping point for so many other things that could lead you to the alignment, right? Right. Which I think, I think, I, I, yeah, like it's for anybody, doesn't matter what age you are, making one small choice, right? In, in any direction is better than making no choice at all, so... Yes, Damn, look at us. Deep, we are so deep today. We are such aunties. Oh, oh my god. god, play some hip hop. I ain't even going to Tip the scales. Hold on. Change the energy. Bitch, I had to put this behind me today, bitch. <laughs> the way my acid reflux has been fucking me up. I said, bitch, I'm going to bring these little uh, Alka Seltzer chews. You taking Alka Seltzer chews bitch. with wine is the most auntie <laughs> shit I've bitch, ever seen. No, let me tell you. Life. Shout out to my homegirl, Latasha. She came over last night. First off, <sighs> kill, we, I, I was drinking. Bitch. <laughs> the, because last night, Girl, Yo, you, she really pulled out a bottle of alcohol this, <laughs> chewables in Because this. I'm feeling it right here. But also, I made oxtail last night with the scotch bonnet peppers. Thank you. Y'all, this is how much oh. she my neighbor. You think I asked Bridget for a cup of sugar? No. I said, she asked me for scotch, scotch bonnet. bonnet I was like, oh, we have a whole bag. Let me... <laughs> 
<laughs> so I made oxtail last night. If Dumpling. you don't know what Scotch bonnet is, please it's, do your it, yeah, Jamaica, Jamaican peppers. Yeah. Uh, but I made like, and you know, I also made the curry on mm-hmm. Saturday. Mm-hmm. But that's a lot of spices for my half white uh, <laughs> chest going on over here. And so like last night we're talking and girl, we're debating. We're talking about patriarchy. And I'm like, bitch, this is a real auntie ass conversation auntie-ass i said oh my god i wish i was recording this right now so we're talking and next thing you know she just her face just starts <laughs> turning i said bitch i got you and i go and run i said girl i got you girl you getting some heartburn we done ate a lot you Yo, even drink it <laughs> the wildest thing that i've realized in my almost one year of being a podcaster is that every conversation turns into a podcast every, conversation bitch, like everything mandy and i will be sitting bitch. at sitting at coffee and sitting having coffee and i'm like oh bitch this is a pod topic and i'll be like okay stop this. talking stop talking write right, it down right, we'll write, write down. this down in our notes um, That's crazy. So you right. was having a whole pod conversation last night and it led you to bring Alka Seltzer tablets bitch, to the also studio. No, because even I told you this morning, the bitch cramping and shit. So I didn't I was laying down this morning. And then when I lay down, <laughs> by the way, if you got a really bad heartburn and acid reflux, lay on your left side. It really does help. Um <laughs> let me give the auntie tips out here, okay? You want to tell them why it feels better on your left side? Oh, that part, I don't know. I just Googled it and it say lay, lay, lay on your left side. Because of your organs and where your organs are. Oh, damn, science. You don't want to put I pressure. I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, I thought it was like some just science. like function. you should have known. <laughs> That's going to be on Mandy's tombstone. Science, I should have known. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, man. I wanted to go ahead real quick. You know, we got to do a little bit of the hippity hop. And this is one of the shows yes. that I'm supposed to have started watching. Mm-hmm. But Godfather of Harlem, they do release soundtracks. And, you know, I, we talked about it on Patreon. I think we talked about it here. Yes. I love a good soundtrack. Yes. And I think the last soundtrack that we uh, played here on the pod was for Judas and the Black Messiah. Yes. Amazing soundtrack if mm-hmm. you haven't listened yet. Um I'm going to go ahead and play this one. It's called Waiting on Me, Swiss Beats, YG, Godfather Harlem. Mm-hmm. It's just so you stuff. know the So you got the soundtrack, but you didn't watch the show? No, but the music is good, girl. I'm you like, oh, watch damn. The show. I told you I'll give you the login. Yeah, but man, the, the way the gun laws are set up in New York, it made me not like, I, bitch, I be wanting to go bah, 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 when I watch little gangster shit. And I can't even get a gun up here, bro. Made me want to go down to Florida and go to Walmart and get my gun. <laughs> you can't get a gun there. I but, know. I do keep a money in a rubber band, bitch. Hey, if you're a new listener, go listen to When I Sold Drugs on the Wayno episode. <laughs> Bia is also on this song. I love Bia. And y'all know, I'm fucking with the Bia, even though she got the Bottega sold out at the Bottega. Well, you can't get Bottega at the Bottega. She wears all her jewelry to the Bottega. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But yeah, Bia's on this. Also, if you guys just want to see the list of amazing people that are featured on this soundtrack, of course, you got Swiss. So that was Swiss YG, Mm -hmm. Bia. And gigs, but you also have Rick Ross, mm. you have Freddie Gibb, you have West Side Gun, Roddy Rebel, mm. um, and a few people that I'm not really familiar with. Uh, but it's just it's just good. DMX is also on here. Mm. Um, R.I.P. DMX, but it's a really good like make you want to go out and start selling and slanging and shooting people. I love it. That's <laughs> that is the type of shit I like to listen to. Mm. It's either that or bitch money bag yo, where it's just like. Y'all niggas keep watching me. You jealous. I'm going to keep doing what I do. I got time today and I'm going to tell you what's up. 
That's definitely me. I like energy. that. <laughs> it really is. Energy. Consistently. And sometimes I need I need that. So I'm glad because. You were. She came over my house and first uh, somehow uh, we were listening to oh the new 7th Streeter actually. 7th Streeter has an album dropping on the 17th. Which we'll, um, yeah, we'll play, we'll play some of the stuff. We'll definitely project. play yeah. some of the stuff uh, for her when it, when it releases. But it went from that and then because only two of the songs are available, next thing you know, fucking... Dr- Drunk in Love came on or yeah. uh, something with Beyonce. Oh, Crazy in Love. Crazy in Love. And I was like, how do we get here? And then I was like, you know what? Money bag, yo, that's how I'm feeling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I went and put on the whole album. I was and- like, oh, so we went from Crazy in Love to look at my wrist, <laughs> I got time, time today. <laughs> and it was like, oh, this is really interesting. Well, actually, we went to Just Say That because that's my favorite did, song on the go album. To just first. Say That. But that was here. I, again, I played Just Say That on the Freshly Squeezed here. Yes. Um, but I guess before we get out here, you want to do TV? You want to rock to TV? There's so much TV. There. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. First oh, all, my God. First of all, Netflix documentaries have just <laughs> snatched my soul, okay? Um, and there's two that are really fantastic. The first one is it's a tearjerker. And I know, Mandy, you don't get down with the whites, but he has <laughs> he has transcended beyond. And actually, both of these both of these men have transcended beyond the, beyond the whites. There is a documentary on Netflix about Bob Ross. Happy Accidents. Okay. Do you, do you know who Bob Ross is? The name sounds familiar. So, okay. So, there used to be a show on PBS that was a painting show with this white oh, man yeah, with that, the that, afro yes, that yes, used to paint know, all the that's landscapes. That's how I knew. Yes. That's Bob Ross, right? Okay. And basically, the documentary is about his story, right? How he became famous. He got an interesting he, story? Yeah, but it's sad because uh, he partnered with a corporation. Oh. And you got to watch it. He partnered with a corporation that owns the rights to his name still to this day. <gasps> to his whole name? Whole name. So you just got to watch. You just got to watch the oh, doc. I'm wow. not going to spoil it. But it's, I mean, it's a it's a tearjerker when you think about, like, how many people's lives. Because they, they show Which it. They we show. used to wake up at 6 a.m. going to school in the morning. First he of all, was PBS, on TV. PBS, PBS had the shows. Like, um. PBS had the shows. If you were a little kid, you was watching Sesame Street and Bob Ross. If you was a, a grown up, you were you, watching Charlie Rose. Like you, you ready to make? I'm gonna take you back. Go ahead. Bananas and pajamas. I have. Tell me, you know bananas and pajamas? No, I, I don't know bananas and pajamas. For real? No. Is that a millennial thing? Were you like too know. old for bananas and pajamas? I don't know. Damn. What you? This is thought, where we need scream, man. I thought we were about to really bond. Y'all, I don't know what Bananas. childhood Bridget has. I really don't. New York children, I'm sorry. I don't know what your childhood. It did not involve grown people giving out candy because usually if that's what that meant in New York, you were probably going to get abducted. But Bananas and Pajamas was a show. So don't come, don't, don't come attacking. <laughs> First of all, Bananas and Pajamas, 1997. I was 11. I was watching oh, the Spice Girls at that oh, point. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh. I was watching. I was, si- I was six. <laughs> I was I was into Spice Girls. But 97 was Jam- was Moesha and Jamie Foxx show and the the the, the WB Frog. Okay, the like, WB Frog. I was into all those shows. Yeah, like, I was that during was, Buffy the Bam- Vampire Slayer. Yeah, shit. I was watching Charmed. Charmed. Okay, I was, I was watching Charmed. I was there with you with Charmed. Yeah, Charmed, okay. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then, yeah, and then I was watching Moesha and um, The Parenthood with Robert Townsend and all those shows. Anyway, neither here nor there. I was not in the, I was, the Bananas and Pajamas was, was oh, beyond me. All right. But um, Bob <laughs> Ross documentary on Netflix, bring a, <laughs> spin the block. Um, <laughs> really fantastic doc I would recommend everybody watch. Just because I think, you know, the, the beautiful thing about his story was that he... Like I said, it, it wasn't because he was just like this random white guy that would rant, that would, he would speak to you so peacefully. It's like, it's like meditation, you know what I mean? And then, and you get testimonies from people that were like, yo, I was addicted to drugs and I started painting. I was severely depressed and I started painting watching his show and he made, he empowered me and made me feel, you know, calm or made me feel like, like I could, you know, I was inspired to do something new or it's just a really, really beautiful story. Right. Um, and the other documentary that I watched, which isn't new, but it's on it's it's new on Netflix, is um, the David Geffen, the story on David Geffen. Which um, you woke up because you're I woke up and watched. <laughs> was watching. And, well, no, I woke up and watched Canaan because we we I usually watch Canaan in, in the mornings. Um, I like to I like to start my day in the Power Universe, even though I don't really subscribe to most things Curtis Jackson. But the Power Universe on Stars, I'm with the shits because it's good quality TV, and the Canaan story is fire. So I was watching that this morning. But also the David Geffen story for the for most of our listeners who are not going to know who David Geffen is, please do your googles. Um, David Geffen is responsible for um, Asylum Records, which was a record that a, a record label. He started out as an agent. His story is is incredible, but he he literally made the jump and the pivot between 
being an agent at William Morris to then being a manager of artists to then starting a record label called Asylum Records, which was which was meant to house um, song, singers and songwriters that that did not want to sign their masters and their publishing over to labels and then switched over and decided to become, you know, an executive at Warner at Warner Films and worked in movies and, wow. and worked with Steven Spielberg. You just got to you got to you got to watch it. It's just a phenomenal it's a phenomenal inspirational story about the importance of the pivot, which we which Mandy and I discuss in depth on Patreon all the time, especially yeah. with, with with the friends with benefits that we bring on on our Make It Make Sense segment when we talk about people's journeys and the importance of pivot of the pivot and understanding the importance of you know who you are in 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 every season and what you bring to the table and how you can be an asset in every in every every way shape and form and it was just a really inspirational documentary that um that reminded me that you know reaffirmed that everything everything that you feel like is attached to you it's attached to your soul is meant to push you further into into your career and and make you money make you if, rich if, if we stay make you on rich if we if we stay on Netflix for a little bit too yeah. um did you watch I, the Jason Momoa movie First off, the fact, why my man came over and called him Jason Mimosa. <laughs> I said, that man last that name is, your is not man. Mimosa. That, that is, my, is, that your is man. my man. He called to get up. That is my man. And I'm yes. like, it is not Mimosa. <laughs> Don't be disrespectful to Sir Jason, okay? Um, I'm not going to lie. I know that you and you and your partner were like, oh my God, it wasn't great. I we, was, didn't, we didn't finish it though, in, in all okay. fairness. We so, didn't finish and that's it. That's the problem. I was like, ooh, that God. is the problem. I said, if he is not Cal Drogo with no lines. No. Or running around and see in 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 that show, which by the way on Apple, I got to give you my login for that Please. too, sis, because see season say, two is is lit. The first episode say, is crazy. The only problem that I had with this movie mm -hmm. was that he kept his shirt on the whole time. I was like, oh, what type okay. of fucking Jason Momoa show is this? All right. Um, but for those of you who kind of like revenge thrillers, yeah. This had a plot twist that I appreciated. Oh, because you would not have guessed it to be. All right, well, don't the spoil it. I'm not gonna spoil it, but what I'm saying is, you know how when you watch shows and you're like, "Damn, I just wasted an hour and 48 minutes of my life." That's how I felt when I went to see Candyman. But that's how I, that's how I felt when I watched Beckett, and I love everything oh. from the sperm of Denzel Washington. But this show, it was a movie, movie, whatever it was. A, Show movie, same thing. I guess it can't be the same thing. I guess. This film, there you go. This this film, this presentation on Netflix, Beckett <laughs> was a waste of my motherfucking a of people, time. A lot of people said that it was awful. But Sweet Girl, again, look, I didn't even say the name of the film, but Sweet Girl uh, with Jason Momoa and Isabella something. Again, sorry, we don't have Scream Man, but was phenomenal. It had a nice um, twist, and I will say. Um, it was a little triggering to me as someone who has um, had cancer affect them very mm -hmm. close yes. um, in proximity with um, a few of the people really close to me recently. So it, it is a journey of of someone losing uh, their partner due to pharmaceutical political stances. Right. Um, and of course, they seek revenge on the pharmaceutical company. But really good film. If you finish it, I promise you, you'll be like, oh, this it. is good. I'll get through it. I'll get through um, it. But that was really good. And outside of that, um, I just want to give a shout out mm. because Andy Cohen, mm. you create some really good trash television, Jesus but Christ. you also are very good at curating a really good reunion show. Okay. And we talked about the film of um, Jocelyn's reunion show, but also I just watched the baddies reunion, just as equally bad. Zeus, you're giving us good trash quality that maybe we don't need reunions for because you're not giving what the girls need, okay? Mm. Um, but, of course, on Sundays, um, mm. I watch Real Housewives of Potomac. So love what they're given over there. Uh, they are the queens. And also, ladies, in two weeks, we get Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, and I'm here for it. I need the gen <laughs> drag, honey. Drag the Shaw. Um, but yeah, you know I like my little reality television shows. Outside of that, that's really it. I didn't get to see Candyman, y'all. Bridget and I were invited to a screening, unfortunately. Uh, they were really, really, really keeping true to the uh, vaccine uh, mandate here in New York City. And I only got one shot. So we didn't get to go, but you got to still see Candyman. And what we had, a, we had an impromptu date night on Thursday. We were like, you know what? If Candyman's playing right now, let's just go see it, right? So I love Yaya. 
He fine. I do. He fine. But did you see him take the picture but with he... Jason Momoa? No. I said choo choo, bitch. All right. So choo <laughs> choo. So no, I really I'm a I'm a fan of his, right? And I think um I really liked him in the get down. I thought he I loved his character in the show, The Get Down. I don't know if you watched that on Netflix. Um, but I mean he he plays Manta in Aquaman too, which you know obviously from from with Jason Momoa. Um, but I I was so I was expecting um, I was I was expecting this to be phenomenal, and I was just not impressed. But also because I'm from the generation that was absolutely terrified by the first Candyman. The first Candyman was really like horrific as a, watching that as a kid, and so. The only thing to me that was scary about this film was the score. And Jordan Peele knows um, whoever. I need to look that up. Matter of fact, I'm going to look it up. Gonna, I thought you were going to say his skin. Because we just got to get him a chemical pill. No. Like, which, women cannot, which was crazy. In the whole women movie, cannot show up that way In the whole film. movie. In the whole Come movie. On. He, there's like his skin is is corroding. Yeah. And you can't, and no one notices. Nobody says anything. Nobody, he doesn't go to the hospital. His girlfriend don't say nothing. I'm like... Babe, okay. the minute I see some infection wait, wait, wait. on your hand, we fair, go into the hospital. To be fair, black people, we do battle eczema. That's a no, thing. no, 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 no. You didn't, it, this no, was not eczema. It, did, it wasn't eczema. This was a far cry. <laughs> eczema is like flaky. You know what I'm saying? Right? It's giving. No, oh, no, no, it was no, no. Given, it was given, this was like pieces of. of it was giving flesh. alien flesh. It was giving okay. flesh, okay. not skin. Okay. So, <laughs> damn. <laughs> it was giving flesh. It was giving, sir, you might have gangrene. This is okay. bad news. <laughs> and he didn't go to the hospital. But I will say that um, the music in this, let me find the music director. It was good. Because the music in every Jordan Peele film it's, is it's always good. perfectly eerie. It's good. In us, I love it. In us, it was, it was really eerie. The in fact Get that, Out, but, it was But the eerie. fact that he also was able to make, I got five on it, some way be eerie mm -hmm. in his film, mm -hmm. like, so great. Yeah. So, so great. I'm trying to find the sound. Do, do, Hauntingly do, cynical do, history. Do, 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 do. Jo Johan jo Johansson? Is that who this was? Hold on. Okay. No. So Robert, his name is Robert Ike Aubrey Lowe. That's who did the score for this camp for this remake. Let me tell y'all something. Music is what makes I mean, think if you can think about horror movies that you watched as a kid, right? Mm. The music is probably the scariest part. Oh, bitch, the that most shit, it, it, it lets me know when I gotta cover my eyes, bitch. That let the music in this Candyman. Shout out to Robert Ike Aubrey Lowe because the music in this remake was the was the best part about it. Like when you the the eeriness of it, the the creepy the creepy notes and sound effects he was using, your whole body wants to just you just want to. I wanted to sink into the chair. The music was the music was phenomenal. The way that you think about like Jaws, right? And the dun 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 dun, 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 like that, that type of, that type of, of classic, timeless, fearful music is, is definitely in this film. But otherwise, everything else, I mean, the plot, the one thing that you would love, Mandy, is that he doesn't kill any, he only kills white people the whole film. Oh my God, so, I love it. Mandy, Mandy will appreciate that. Um, <laughs> Can you but <laughs> the whole movie, he's killing white people. But wait, so all the black people live? You ha no, but you have to oh, you okay. have to watch. But <laughs> okay. but Candyman ain't out here killing black people. So <laughs> okay, everything else in the in the world is killing black people except Candyman. Well, so I ain't like, gonna hold what? you, baby. It gets if crazy. If Yaya is pulling up to my crib, if I say Candyman five times in my mirror, baby, I'm about to go home right now. Candyman. All right, no, 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 no. Candyman. <laughs> Enough! Hand him on. This bitch want to die. Bring that ass here, boy. So <laughs> it's Yaya, bitch. So, so yeah. So it was. It was the, the the movie. The film itself was disappointing, but the the music was great. So shout out to the the, the person who composed the score. Shout that out for casting Yaya. And <laughs> that joint was fantastic. Um, what else did I watch this weekend? See, season two premiered um on Friday. And that if you if you're not familiar, see on on Apple Plus is a show about a futuristic population of humanity that's blind. Everyone's blind. Oh my God, blind. that's my type of shit. Sci-fi? Yeah, Jason Momoa too. So it Wait, stars him. It so, stars him? Yes. Oh God. So did he take his shirt off? Everybody's blind in some parts, but it's not, he's like, it's, it's very, it, you have to just watch it. It's okay. a, it's a, it's a, it's a, an incredible show because everybody's blind. So everything, everyone is functioning. And I love, I love things that are futuristic and still somewhat primitive at the same time. Right. Mm. So it's like, you're, we're talking about like, you know, a population that has survived several apocalypses and it's like the year 2190 and everybody is living in tents and huts and blind and nobody can see. And they're trying to, you know what I mean? 
their ways of like identifying each other is is to feel the the knots on their bracelet or the hear the bells that are on their their chain. Like it's it's really incredible. It's an incredibly incredibly well done show. Um, but the season season two just premiered on Friday. So if you have not watched season one, please get into season one and then season two because Alfred Woodard is in there too, and you know Alfred Woodard can do no wrong. I know that's right. So um, lots of TV this week. Yeah, I mean, I have I didn't really get to watch too much TV. I was really. Manny was talking a lot and cooking. I was cooking. I was hosting. I was working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was uh, networking. Um, I was doing a lot this week. Um, I guess, of course, before we get out of here, um, it wouldn't be right. I want everyone. I don't even want to say New Orleans. I just want to say Louisiana and everyone in that region. Yes. I want all of you to be safe. Um, I want, all, you know, I, I, I truly hope that the, the the catastrophic event of what we know took place with Hurricane Katrina is not currently going to be the same with Hurricane, I believe it's Ida, Elda? Ida. 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 Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they're getting hit hard again with a really, really big hurricane. Um, I know one of the big power power systems just recently failed. And I just want to, you know, yeah, send was, prayers to a, everyone down there. A power line that um that was that fell and that literally left most of most of New Orleans in the dark. Um in the dark. Last night. And there was a number, um, and we always we always we always think about um FEMA as being mm. um subpar when we think about how Katrina went down. But really I wouldn't even blame it on FEMA. I would blame it on the administration at the time. One hundred percent. Who dropped the ball and did not did not, you know, adequately deploy them. Um but I did want to share um there is there is a an organization of people called the Cajun Navy that apparently are um, making rescues and things like that. If you are still in a position where you need um, need you know any anything at all, any resources locally on the ground, um, there are two phone numbers that I wanted to share, and that is five zero four five one seven six two eight nine. And they started making rescues. So leave all of your information: your name, your address, your contact number, how many people are in the house with you, pets, anything that you specifically need. Um, you know, they're, they're, they are on the ground. They're trying to figure out, you know, who in the area is most in need. And there's, and I don't, I don't know what the, what the, what the number of, of rescuers is a part of this coalition, but I'm assuming that there's plenty because it's been popping up on my Twitter feed a lot. Um, again, the phone number is 504-517-6289. So if you were in the, if you were in the New Orleans, Louisiana area, definitely give them a call um, and, and, and share that number with anybody that you know that's in that area as well. Because at this point, I mean, we talk about sending prayers to places all the time and prayers are great. Prayers are prayers work. Prayer always works. Um, but for those of us who are very spiritual, prayer without works is dead. So you got to make sure you follow up and follow through with other things as well. And so, you know, if there are yeah. resources, anybody, if there are resources that anybody can send to us, anybody wants to share with us, please feel free. My DMs, Manny's DMs are open. Always um, open, but not for dick pics, for the real shit. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. They are open. Do people still to, send you dick pics? Do they? Girl, oh, I'll be no. like, bloggity block. I'll be like, because mm -hmm. you know now you have to touch mm -mm. to see the image like when people send you stuff if they don't if you don't follow them mm -mm. you have to click it and then i'll be clicking it and i'll be like well it's why gross. whose son are you it's gross, it's gross. damn but, fuck your mother okay but anyway make sure make sure that y'all are um actively send, sharing information and and resources around louisiana because you know at the at the end of the day we're, we're dealing we're dealing with a country that is currently divided on so many issues that should not be divided on Public health and public safety should not be, and it should not be a political or bi or, or bipartisan or, or partisan issue. It should really be ab about community and unity and continuing to take care of one another in crisis. And so, yeah, if you have any resources and things like that, make sure you share them with us and share them with each other. Yeah. All right, y'all. Well, I want to thank y'all for I tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> To see the thing is, if y'all haven't yet, make sure y'all join us on Patreon. It's patreon.com backslash see the thing is pod. Uh, we literally, if you are on the top tier, you're getting another bonus episode every week. If you're at the bottom tier, you're getting at least two bonus episodes a month. Um, and again, we have our friends with benefits. Yes. We talk our shit. We really dig deep. We opened up this month too. We did. Uh, or maybe that's October. But we really, we really definitely share more about who we are. Yes. Um, and so if you love us here and you want to get to know us more, go on over to Patreon. Yep. Uh, shout out to uh, Savon and Alex. We missed you all today. I miss you so much. Oh, yeah. We're so empty uh, without you. 
Uh, and shout out for KC sitting in for Parks. Parks then left us like he left the J- JBP too, y'all. Parks got so married. Parks and said, said, "Fuck, fuck all y'all." y'all. <laughs> I, I found my happiness later. <laughs> Congratulations to Parks. Yes. We're, we're waiting for your return, sir. Yes. Uh, but otherwise, y'all subscribe to the YouTube. Y'all check us out on all of our feeds. Follow us on social media. Subscribe to Patreon. Yes, that part. Uh, and thank y'all for tuning in. Talk to y'all later. Have See a good y'all week. y'all next week. Ew.